You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Oh, no. Okay, here they are. Yeah, get rid of them. There are... You can call Don and Mike what? anytime you know, from anywhere in America. Two days in a row now. 365 I heard it. Set that already. Their English has gotten better. Cut it out. Now that problem isolated, Buzz's microphone not turned on, and that thing repeating itself. Dan, you're supposed to hit that button where the guys come in, and there, that's, that's God interfering with you. <laughs> hi, Buzz. Hi. hi. Hi, Rob. Oh, hi. Hi, Mike. Hi, Don. Hi, fellas. Hey. Get them out of here. I hate them. I wish they were dead. They've got They've got a place on this show. They've got staying power. True story. He was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself. A man of faith. A man of hate. And a soul torn apart. Yeah. Viewer discretion advised. Come on, Mike. How have you been? <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Smoking Platform. And all the ships at sea. It's Rob Spiewak. And I bet something good is getting ready to happen to you today. Due to Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. And uh, hi, and thank you for listening uh, to the Don and Mike Show, everybody. It's a new episode on this now uh, Wednesday. Wednesday! 2-18-04. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Hi, Buzz. Oh, boy, that pisses me off that I played that thing twice. Uh, yeah, that's all right. It was just, it, here's, here's the thing. It, it's no excuse. It's just <laughs> too many meetings today. Yeah, you got a lot on your mind. That'll too many meetings today. A lot on your plate. Here we are doing the show. Here we are. Uh, let me start by saluting somebody uh, who was going to be, uh, somebody who did something uh, first. I, I've never experienced this in my many years of men's room loitering. Mm-hmm. I'm in the... Uh, I'm upstairs. I'm doing the doing the thing. And, you know, I'm standing in the front of the stall, and uh, a guy walks in, and now I have my my back to him because I'm I'm taking a leak. Right. And I hear you're him, in the stall. You're not uh, at the urinal. Uh, no, I'm at the urinal. urinal. I'm sorry. Okay. The, the the urinal that hangs on the wall. Because actually, you 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 frighten me. I, I, I hate did to I, did I, I hate to question stall? you. I hate to analyze something you say this quickly in the show. But you said you were standing in front of the stall, and I oh, picture no, no. this man like out of The Shining, staring at the stall. I'm sorry. I'm dizzy from all of our oh, meetings of today. I have a low grade headache to beat the band. <laughs> Let me just get a running start on this again. Very good. I'm taking a leap. There. Now that's easy. So I'm standing at the urinal. And as I'm standing at the urinal, a guy walks in. Now, I can't see who he is because my back is to him. And he says, hey, yeah. <laughs> so I say, how you doing? Guy doesn't say anything. Mm. Guy then goes into the stall. You didn't feel anything like... <laughs> no, no. Okay. Here's, here's the point of this. <laughs> okay. I've, never, I've never experienced this in the bathroom before. I hear the guy then continue to talk. And he's saying, right on. Oh, you bet. Oh. You bet your ass. And then I hear the sound of tinkling, and I realize the guy's talking on his cell phone while he's taking a leak. Yeah, I've done that before. I've never done it. You've I've never done that? Never experienced I mean, Did he have hands free? I, don't, I, I couldn't look in. You didn't want to turn around. You would have gotten him wet. I, I didn't want to look and see, but as I got done and I was exiting to go to wash my hands, uh-huh. you know that little crack in the in the bathroom door where right. the stall door is not closed all the way, you could kind of see in? Right. I could see he was holding the phone with his right hand. Oh. Uh, hold the phone with the right hand, holding his, you know, holding his thing. Wait, that's on, which is worse, uh, talking on the phone or eating? Uh, oh. Eating? Eating, yeah. Eating, although I've done that. I've done that, but I've never really enjoyed it. I've never done it in a public bathroom. I've only done it at home. No, mm-hmm. not even. Uh, but, but anyway, it was just I, I thought it was weird, yeah. you know, that you wouldn't just say to a guy, listen, hey, give me two seconds, i got to take a leak here. Right. And since there's just one urinal, he had to stand at the toilet. Isn't that audible then at the on the other end of the phone, to the person would, he was talking to? I would think, they... Buzz, you're right, because it's like the old echo chamber. Yeah. That when you're in the bathroom, everything is reverberating everywhere. Eating is worse than the cell phone, especially. Yeah. It depends on what you're eating. The last time I did Cinnabon. 
Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. You win. I mean, you're going to have one bad hand no matter what. Yeah, you win. <laughs> you win. Although I do have a... So I'm, I'm going to wait for my charming child bride to call in because... Oh, lovely. There, there was a story about her that it, that it does involve a, a bodily function. Oh, oh yeah. she's not going to like it. I can well, tell you that already. Too bad. I told her I'm, I told her I'm going to talk about it because I'm, I'm telling you, it's a one in a million story. Hmm. That my uh, charming child bride uh, has. Our phone number is 877-365-3636. That's from anywhere in America, from Canada. Call 800-636-1067, Washington, D.C., on WJFK, 202-432-1067. Call any time if your calls are of an exotic or entertaining uh, nature, if you're talking about what we're talking about. Uh, other than that, just wait for the phone scan. Right. Which is uh, coming up. Uh, also coming up on the show very soon, uh, something we discussed. You know, Mike, darn the luck. Once again, here it is. Whitey, the white man, taking the black man down. Mm -hmm. First off, Black History Month. Do I have to tell you, my brothers? It's in the month with the fewest days. Mm -hmm. Now, this year, there's an extra day because it's a leap year. That's right. Wrong. But still, we've not been able to celebrate Black History Month, the, the shortest month of the year. Where's Robert? Because hold on, we've been yeah, gone. Get to that. Yeah. Because we've been gone, we've right. been we've been suspended for the mm -hmm. whole BS thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you, coming very soon to celebrate Black History Month, N3F. N3F. That's right. N3F. Mm -hmm. Rob, explain what this means, please. Because remember, the whole concept that that had been come up, come up with was that we were going to have soul food. With white guys eating soul food. Right, right, exactly. And N3F stands for... Oh, I had a lovely conversation with Robert the Mailman today, and he uh, told me what N3F was, which mm. is Negro Food Fear Factor. Oh, is it, is it Robert's concept? Yes, it's Robert's Robert, concept, and he will, Robert no, man, food. will be bringing in various uh, soul food, you Excellent. know, the stuff like oxtail and... and now, this is going to be the real stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. not going to be like he's going to... He's going to make it something it's not no, to make no, he it worse. Said that it was this is the real, because I'll try everything he brings. The genuine deal, but also, soul food, he soul said food. that he's, he's endeavoring to bring in the most disgusting soul food he can find. Yeah. Right on. So, All right. Right, that's on. right on, Don. So, right on. So, so stand by, yeah. my Negro brothers, because... We will be celebrating Black History Month on this show. Uh, what better way to do that? And, he, and, and Robert's a good cook, so that'll be interesting. Yeah. With now, it's <laughs> hey, Rob. the Negro food fear factor. Right. That's what that's what we're calling. N3F. Yeah. I have a question uh, while yeah. we're on the subject about fear factor. Last night, hey, I don't know if it was a repeat or not. I don't watch fear factor well, usually. Couldn't have been because we're in sweeps, my friend. All right. They were eating intestines at the end. Yep. Okay. They but but you can't do that, can you? They were eating the stuff that was inside the... Uh, that's that's like, the bad stuff, Like cow it? intestines, those kinds of things are served as foods. I mean, they, they clean them as best you can, I guess. Okay, because, I mean, I didn't get what they... They were they were biting in to the, to the cow thing, right? And uh, I guess it was a cow thing, and they had them hanging oh. down, and then there was this stuff coming out. It didn't look like... I don't think every time I watch Fear Factor, and I'm not a big fan of it, but... I, I, I'm not a big fan I've of it been, at all. Like, if I if I flip by and it's on, I watch it. Uh -huh. uh, I just I assume that the stuff that they have people doing won't, I came in late to it won't kill them. Like for that's instance, what I was saying. I said they couldn't on, because of the stuff we've done. They couldn't have them eating the bad stuff because it's, it's it, you, you can't eat that. All Star Survivor. I, I'm not happy to tell you that I I am watching that. I, I really am watching All Star Survivor. All Star Survivor. <laughs> the first <laughs> the first four days they were on the island, they had no food. And no water. Now, it's entirely possible that somebody could have had uh, some kind of a major medical malfunction. Mm -hmm. with, yeah, four days. Four days out of the heat with nothing. In Rob's case, it's four hours. Nothing to eat, nothing to drink. <laughs> Three. Well, right. you know that the people on Survivor aren't going to let those people die. No. Just like you know on Fear Factor, whatever it is that they're eating, which was gross, has to be safe. Brings me to my next point about Fear Factor. Yeah? The very end of Fear Factor, the last challenge, they have these tiny little, like, Shrine Circus mini bikes that they have to run across this narrow little plank that's a hundred feet over the ground. Wow! And there's nothing, and they're attached to bungee cords. I have. So the one guy shoots down on the little thing, and he makes it all the way to the end, and he goes right off the platform because he's going so fast because they have a time thing. He's attached to a bungee cord. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I, I'm thinking if you. What my point is here. I'm sorry. <laughs> what I'm saying is if it's fear factor, ooh, 
Or what, what's the deal with the bungee cord? <laughs> because you can't really have a real fear factor where people could really kill themselves. Well, the thing is, it's this fake stuff. You know? Someday we will, Mike. we got Someday. a war going on. Nobody's paying attention to the fact that there are people dying overseas. Yeah. Let the people over here, ooh, that's scary. You know what's scary? What's scary is somebody... Janet saying, Jackson's breast. You know, <laughs> you didn't know what... Saying no. BS on the radio. No, what's scary is when you get your duty uh, in the armed services to go duty. over to Baghdad. That's, said, uh, that's what's scary. Yeah, that's scary. It's, uh, duty. So, I mean, yeah. it just seems kind of silly. And I said, you know, really, what you make it is, uh, you, you make, even if you put little, uh... Little bags down below. Uh, listen, you know how the you know how, but what's the you know how the, if I'm attached to a cord, you I'll know ride how a mini bike off the platform. Listen, you know how the machine works here with this stuff. You you can't do something where someone's going to hurt themselves. So you know. But I still I want someone to please just tell me what was in the goo. What was the goo that they were eating? Got the answer for you right. I now. didn't because I came in late to it. Uh, and, and to remind me, I want to talk about the midgets. Eric. Hey, buddy. Hi, Eric. Hey, listen, Mike. It was cow spleen, and what they had to do was they had to. To eat the cow spleen, eat the suck the juices out, spit it in a mug, and then dr chug it down. So it was the juice inside the spleen. Exactly. Oh man! And, it didn't. and I'm sure that they did. It was nasty stuff. I'm wow. sure they did some research saying it's gross, but but it's perfectly edible. Yeah, they have yeah. because they drink it. Right. right. Um, I I I tuned into the midget show for a second uh, last night. The littlest the for, littlest groom for a short time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. It doesn't do it for me. No. It just doesn't do it. I, I, I like the fact that they've got some midget girls along with regular girls, but... Did I mention that I got a call from our littlest friend? Scott? No. <laughs> from Boston? What did he want? He, Scott, was, he was liquored up. Scott the uh, drunk door? He did mention he was apparently really liquored up and even having a hard time communicating. No, no, not that bad. The message was very clear, but he was obviously... He, he, I think he, was, he said he was about to go on. Which would indicate that the little kings. These are the little kings. The, well, they rock. They'd yeah. broken up the last time we talked to him, right? Yeah. And uh, he was on the show and he told us that. But I think that Didn't they, they break up because they had to do their Christmas tour in Branton. <laughs> I think <laughs> they have to play like the elves. Worse. They were actually <laughs> playing elves, right? Yeah. But Scott's all over that. He'd be a great littlest groom. Yeah, <laughs> if he weren't married. Of course, he would be better in the show. The, the you know the, the hybrid show, which would be my little obnoxious. So <laughs> that, that leads me to the horniest groom <laughs> that I got last night from a guy who shall go unnamed, and he's a guy who really doesn't even have anything to do with the entertainment business. Not that I do, but he's way further out than I. He's a lawyer guy. Okay. okay. He's a lawyer guy that's involved in uh, sports marketing and and. Running professional teams, right. all right. So this guy, and it's not David Modell. It's right. uh, it's it's another guy. I've never mentioned this guy's name on the show. He was at my Super Bowl party, though. If you remember, yeah, right. <laughs> and you remember how drunk he was that yeah. night? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you, you remember him? Yes. The guy with the cowboy. I, re I remember him very well. <laughs> so he uh, he calls me up last night. He was he, at another party at your house that I met him at. I think, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, he's been to all the parties at yeah. my house. I, I like him a lot. Very good. Uh, he uh, he calls me up last night. And he says, now. What do you think about this? <laughs> Everybody loves lesbians. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching this show with the midgets. Mm -hmm. What if we pitched a show about midget lesbians? <laughs> now, this is a guy, I, I got a respected lawyer. <laughs> well, yeah. a, a respected lawyer who, who really works on real stuff. Right. But because he's seeing that this is happening on Good TV. climate to watch a show like he's, that. He's, he's thinking, <laughs> how about, you know, the littlest lesbian? How about, and he's, he's asking me for my input on this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you'll pardon the pun. Right. And what I'm having to, to say in a roundabout way to the guy is, you know, hey, hey boy, does that sound great. And, and I'm saying. You know, well, from your experiences, they ought to name your home street to Ronco Street. <laughs> yeah. With the inventors and the, the, the ideas. They, you know, you're always getting pitched. On, so, and aren't you glad you didn't do that other thing? Yes. yes <laughs> yeah, that but, died a death, didn't what it? You mean the slam ball thing? Yeah, slam yeah. ball never amounted to anything. Yeah, well, this guy wasn't even as connected as that. This guy just had his idea for this. Just, uh, just he, he gave he gave you the, the general concept, and it was up to you to hone it and refine it. So right? Frida says to me, what, did, you know, what were you on the phone with this guy for, this lawyer guy? And I said, oh, you know, I've got an idea for a TV show about <laughs> Mitch and Lesby. <laughs> and it was just, I said, because I said to him, I don't see any reason it wouldn't work. I don't, right. you know, I was trying to be polite. Right. I, I don't want to put my money behind.
behind it, but I said, right. look at they've taken uh, the Joe Millionaire and the Bachelor, and now they got it watered down to where there's a fat guy and and beautiful girls and beautiful girls and fat guys, and now I'm watching a midget show tonight. Right? Why not? Why not? You're right. Everybody loves uh, lesbians. Everybody loves midgets. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If you got a deal, sign it. You know, sign. It. Go for it. That's my advice to you. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be all right. Uh, little people are wonderful, though. I mean, little people are highly entertaining. <laughs> they're weird. They're, now, they're, Scott would be so pissed people. at you if you heard you say that. I'd say it to his face. I've said guys. it to his face. They're weird. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not he'd, be, he'd be flipping you off. He, you know, if you're going to do this, you got to do this in front of him. I'm not saying I don't, I don't respect them. Right. Uh -huh. But they, they're weird. They creep you? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, their their and, size, their and, appearance. And and, and perhaps I was decreeped, I was desensitized for the many years mm -hmm. that Scott the Dwarf was a member of our show. Mm -hmm. I have always been horrified of little people until I met Scott, and then it got to be real cool. But one of my first great fears was the movie Willy Wonka. <laughs> and the Oompa Loompa. Oh well, Oompa Loompas terrorized a lot of people. <laughs> and so, but right. Scott made it okay. Right, right. And what is that? And what have you learned from that, Rob? That it's okay to hate. <laughs> now, hey, he'll never be broken. No. Now, no. now last night. Besides, this is what's so bad about sweeps is that you have besides the fear factor on, uh -huh. and you've got the midget getting uh, married. Uh, on the other channel, hold on now, you're making me lose my train of thought here for a second. <laughs> hold on a second. Rob just cracked me up. <laughs> oh, that was on NBC, CBS, ABC. Oh, Twenty Four is on last night, and yeah. American Idol's on last right. night. Yeah, American Idol. Sucked. Last night, American Idol. I, I got a theory. The, they loaded that show with the worst possible singers out of the final 32. Sure. Just so schmucks like us would come on the radio today and say, do you believe how bad all of the singers were last night? Never. You like, think it was some kind of like, you think they've got a method? What was, oh, yeah. Hold on. Or do you think they just no, effed up? No, no. Think about this. In the in the how many years that show been on now? hundred? <laughs> American yeah, Idol? That, yeah. You know those people that sit right down front? Have you ever seen the people in the actual American Idol theater booing? Never. I no. mean, even, even when it's not a great performance, they always get the the, the right. polite pity right. applause. Right. Last night they were booing these people. Wow. They, they were booing the brothers that that came up. So well, the brothers. I don't know how the brothers got to the next level <laughs> for so, entertainment. So value. worst singing ever. I mean, it was. Uh, Why well, there? And I thought was, myself, let me throw this at calculated. you. Calculated. Yeah. Do you think it's calculated? But don't you think really? With all the people that like to hear Simon put people down, and if there's a bad singer, you know, you get. You gotta have a little yin and yang. You gotta have a little good with the bad. Otherwise, it's a boredom factor. No, Once no, I heard like the fifth in a row that sucked, I'm like, this this show no sucks tonight. No, I disagree. I disagree because I here's what I would think as someone who doesn't watch it all the time. Mm -hmm. I watched it at the very beginning when I knew everybody was awful with the with the rejects. Mm -hmm. Then I watched the the first one where they had the the singers that were you know they're like the regular Kelly Clarkson's and all right. that. Why not? Because I'm not expecting it as a viewer. I'm thinking I'm going to get the cream of the crop. No, what they what they toss out last night is eight of the worst possible contestants. You see, you think it was actually by design. Well, they they have to organize them in in their little subsets. Right? I think it's strategic. And, and like well, I said, what irritates me about it though is that because two of those of the eight, and I thought the eight really, I thought there were a couple that were okay, but most of them just really sucked. And I think they made the ones that didn't suck as much go on to the next round. And I don't, th I don't think that's fair. Where they, where they're just they're going to be, you know, cow intestines for someone else to eat <laughs> uh, on the next show. And and then then right after that, how, here's my point: How come all the good stuffs on at once? How come most times there's nothing on TV? Then last night Calculate. you go to 24, and Mike, I know you don't watch it anymore, but I have to say the show delivers because now every week they're killing off another important person. Mm -hmm. Last night is Nina. She is dead. Nina's the, the evil one. She's mm -hmm. dead. Jack Bauer put like six rounds into her. Really? Right wow. at the very end of the show. Boom, 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 See, boom, I, boom. I, I tracked with the show a, a while back and remember, you know, I remember how evil Nina was. And don't, and don't you think the president's wife's going to prison for this? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sherry, enough is happening. That's the problem with that show. Not enough happens. <laughs> Sherry Palmer, yeah. who was standing there while the guy had the heart attack, mm -hmm. saying to the guy's wife, don't give him his medicine. Right. So it'll look like he just died. And I was never here. Uh, yeah. You, I was, David, I'm only doing what you asked me to do. Yeah. You want to spice that show up, you change, you change her name from Sherry to Rosie. In one chilling hour last night. <laughs> In, in one single hour last night, Kim found out that the woman who killed her mother was in the building. She found out that her boyfriend has a baby, and she found out that her dad's a junkie. 
<laughs> it's just, but, he, it's but he had riveting. To be, That's but not had, important to me. Did she take her top off? No. no. Oh, all right. But but he had to be a junkie because the only way that they believe him as a junkie is is for him to actually become addicted to heroin months and months before he actually went to work with Hector. <laughs> anyway, Hector, it's it's. Just great. There it's was, our soap opera. There was a lot of good stuff on on last night. There was just too much uh, uh, good stuff. And I know, like, you're gonna get to a night like tonight. Then you go home after a long day. You go, oh, oh. According to Jim, <laughs> oh, puke. Where were all these uh, good shows from yesterday? You know, I don't know where my wife is. I'm dying to tell you what happened to her, honey. If you're out there, you call in now. King of Queens falls on Wednesday now. Oh. Hey, that's hey, exciting. Hey, I got emailed a picture. Somebody sent me a link from uh, EastCoastBob.com, ah. oh, yeah. a picture of uh, Lisa Remedy. Yeah. Our, is she now a former friend? or I don't know where she's she very called. former. I anyway, think. Really? And I think so. What, what do you think, Buzz? I think she's gone. I think no, she's no. history. She's just uh, strange. Well, I, I, I agree. <laughs> Maybe after the show's off the air, she'll be back. I think she's, she's gone. <laughs> and, and yes, before you call, if you're a new listener, we know her name is Leah. Remedy, but we like calling her Lisa Remedy because that was in her wedding special when the disc jockey called her Lisa Remedy. Anyway, uh, <laughs> twice somebody emailed me a link to eastcoastbob.com, and he has a picture. Hey, Buzz, go there right now all right. and just show him like this picture. Now, in all fairness, Lisa Remedy is pregnant. Right. Well, we've gotten calls that but, say that she's, she's, she's gained a, picture, a little pregnancy weight. I get a, I get an email that has an attachment that says, "Oh yeah, incidentally." You, Look at, open this to see Lisa Remedy. And, of course, completely unfair to uh, to blame a woman for gaining a little weight uh, during pregnancy. She's not gained a little. She's gained a lot. Buzz, you got it there? It, it, right now it says all files shut down due to overwhelming amounts of traffic, but the headline on EastCoastBob.com is uh, Don and Mike suspended for two weeks. Oh, scroll down. Okay. Now keep scrolling right. down and see if you can find the what, picture. of. As I scroll down, what I see is all files shut down due to overwhelming amounts of traffic. Oh, that's too bad. Because yeah, oh, she is, bad. you mentioned Roseanne. Right. That's like when Roseanne was Roseanne. I think when you just mentioned EastCoastBob.com, everybody went there. I think that's probably what happened. Maybe so. Oh, I bet that this is uh, the love of my life. Hello, darling. Hi, sweetie. I just got on my piano lesson. You uh, haven't talked about anything embarrassing to me, have you? Not yet. Can I um, ask a question since yeah. she brought that up? But, you know, we, you've been taking piano lessons for how long now? I, I don't know. hundred years. I was Mike. in, like, third grade, so... I just know years. at one point, uh, at one time, we got a concert, and I, I would request that again. I'd like to hear... I would, uh... Somewhere I would, down the road, I'd like to hear another... I would, uh, I'd say <laughs> shut up. It's <laughs> <laughs> the so second day in a row you told me to shut up. Just about every day when I practice. Okay. I hear it all the time. Because it was something, like, really remedial the last time you played on the show, and now I bet you could do a... Uh, oh, shut up. Classical. I tell you, if you really want to hear it, how about you call during a break? Break, and she'll play for you over the phone. No, no, you I, know what? I'm, I'm waiting for my job offer from Omera's. <laughs> Omera's. You mean you mean to play like cocktail music? Yeah, right. I put <laughs> <on> <laughs> you're, uh, you're, Mike's going to hire you at his piano? bar? Sure. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, you know, I don't know if he'd want to hire you after, after he hears about the, the way you live your life. No, mm. I, I, I just assume, you know, one thing I didn't miss for your uh, uh, hiatus, you know, we'll just call it. Nice. Call it what it is. It was an unfair suspension. It was almost a firing. Well, it was that I didn't have to worry. Why couldn't this embarrassing moment of mine this morning, that actually shouldn't even be an embarrassing moment because I was by myself, eh, why couldn't that have happened during break? I mean, I, I, I got into the habit of telling you so when darling, embarrassing mm, things happen. Darling, when, when, uh, and I said this yesterday, I do mean this about you, you are the greatest that when I was sure we were going to be fired, I, I really, I, I really do love you so much that you did say, "Hey, don't worry about it. You know, you, you've been here before. You get fired, you get another job. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. worry about it." I, and I love you for that. And I love, I love the fact that you just, uh, you know, you've got your own job now, and you've got you're going to school, and you just said, "Get out of here," and uh, went down to Daytona. And boy, didn't I love me that Daytona? You did. And boy, I know. I gave you the option. I said, "Well, you could stay home. I need some rooms painted." Or you could go out of town and <laughs> <your cup. laughs> I, did, I did love that. Uh, this morning, here's what I want to have my wife on the show today. This is a first for her. Got to be a first. It's She's, a first for anybody. And I no, just, no I, I bet there are other people. Here's the deal. She gets up early, uh, earlier than normal. She's. I got to make sure that I I, I, I get on the treadmill. No, we gotta... the, first, the story starts last night. I worked all day. I went to school. I came home. I was starving. I hadn't eaten. And I had a bowl and a half of bran. 
Honey, and oh, I went to hold sleep. on. East Coast Bob is on the phone. Hold okay. on a second, please. Uh, he says the pictures are back up. Okay. East Coast Bob from EastCoastBob.com. Hi, East Coast Bob. How are you doing, Don? Mike? Those pictures are still up. Just did, you just, on the... did you just get, like, slammed, East Coast Yeah, oh, yeah, I just got slammed. Yeah, I got, I've been getting slammed after Super Bowl. The whole thing is... Uh, Buzz, crazy. What should Buzz click on to see the picture of Leah? Which Click link? on new items on the front page. Okay. Be new stuff right on the top. Recent items, new stuff. Yep. The last... Should... Last time I did that, I got the uh, the CBS eye, that it's spooky eye, telling me that this website cannot be retrieved. So let's try it again. All right. Well, uh, I'll, I'll give you the direct link. It's eastcoastbob.com slash fatleah.html. Oh, dash fatleah. All right. All right. Thanks, East Coast yeah. Bob. Bye-bye. East Coast Bob. See you. Bye. So anyway, Buzz, while well, you're finding the picture, hey, honey. Yes, my darling. So, so she, uh, last time uh, she was saying she had two, uh, two bowls of bran. Right. And... She gets up this morning and says, we got, I got the, the plumber's coming over early. I'm going to go get on the treadmill. Okay. That's enough said. And let me tell you, getting bread before going to bed and running first thing in the morning, not a good idea. So she That's comes enough. up. She comes you upstairs. Have to elaborate on no, this. No, no, no. I got it, honey. I got to say this. Okay. I'm sitting at. I'll add, I'll just add thrown away clothes. Okay. That's <laughs> enough. No, I have to say what happened. Plenty. I have to say what happened. It's no, so, it's I so think, you. I it's don't so think there's an intelligent unique. person that doesn't know what happened. Well, I'm going to have to spell it out for them, honey. Our yeah. audience is I'll very dumb. Spell it out would be another hint. We have a very dumb audience. I'm going to have to tell my audience. How now, brown cow? That this morning when my wife came up to the breakfast table and she said, you will not believe what just happened. I was on the treadmill and <laughs> I just crapped my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll, never, I'll never have that combination of events happen in my life again. I said, well, well, how much? And she said, a lot. Oh, my God. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she was running on the treadmill, and she felt something. Just, and it came up on you sudden, like I think a lot of people have suffered from that. You it crapped happened. your pants. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Honey, you're going to love this. It's okay, a break in the end. I got to go now. All right. I really do have to go. All right. I love you, sweetie. I'm glad you you're have back to... to work now that these things can be shared. When you say you have to go, you mean you have to get off the phone, right? No, I feel fine. Yes. Okay, I'm going to leave. All right. Love you, darling. Love you. Right. I love you, boo. Bye-bye. See you. She crapped her pants. Uh, <laughs> Mike, there is the uh, picture. Buzz has it on his computer. And you're going to have to go over and take a look at it. She's wearing a moo-moo. But take a look and tell me how freaking... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Yes. Wow. Ain't that something? So you go to eastcoastbob.com. Yeah, lots they're... of good stuff Is that there. how they're covering her pregnancy on the show? I believe that she's she... not pregnant on the show, right? Right. Uh, wouldn't know, haven't had a, a, the opportunity to I catch think, the, the latest great episode. Isn't this from The View or something? I think there's an ABC oh, logo. Oh, no, it's a, a Jimmy Kimmel show. Oh, Jimmy Kimmel. Okay. Jimmy Kimmel show. So there's uh, there's Lisa Remedy. <laughs> you know, it won't be long that we're going to be able to say this, but she's fatter than we are right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, uh, that's an interesting look. She sure is. Oh, Jesus, we got to do a break here. Mm. Uh, when we come back... Oh, man, do we have a great hate letter. Oh, yes. A, a really great hate letter. Yes, yes. And I know that we, angry at us. I know, we, I know we spent a lot of time yesterday on Rick Dees, but we're going to have to revisit him again. Sure. <laughs> revisit, revisit him. I, I love you. Big show. I, we're doing the mystery guest today. 4.30. Mystery guest. Do you know who the mystery guest is? I do not. You do, Great. Don't look at the stuff there because you, <laughs> you can play along. Where is it? <laughs> Never mind. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. I think you're all set, so just go uh, clean the pipes and let's go. <clears throat> huh? You know, clean the pipes. What do you mean, clean the pipes? You choke the chicken before any big date, don't you? Tell me you spank the monkey before any big date. Oh, my God, he doesn't flog the dolphin before a big date. No. Are you crazy? That's like going out there with a loaded gun. The Don and Mike Show. Not just lowbrow, they're no-brow. Don and Mike. Right, right. I think we'll wait on this uh, hate letter. we got, got to get some other pressing stuff to do. There's never a shortage of hay letters. It's just a particularly good, funny one. Uh, I should take this opportunity to tell you that Friday we're giving away a grand prize birthday gift. Uh, why should I read uh, all of this stuff? I'll tell you it's a $400 American Express gift card. That's good. $300 gift certificate to Party City. Party City. $175 gift certificate to an online cake store. Oh, mm. fantastic. Get that, your cake over the computer. That sounds shaky. A lot of cake. And, uh... 
A two hundred dollar gift certificate to Pizza Hut. Or any parties better with pizza. Or for some of the little girls on the on the third floor, lunch. <laughs> all, all of these prizes wow. we're, we're giving away. Lots of prizes. Courtesy of uh, Malcolm in the Middle, we're giving away all this stuff on Friday. Watch the 100th episode of Malcolm in the Middle, Sunday starting at 9 p.m., 8 p.m. Central. That would be 9 Eastern, 8 Central, only on uh, Fox. Right. Wonderful. Okay, there you go. Um... There is so much happening besides us and in our meetings and uh, and our suspension and and us almost getting fired that I'm glad we have an opportunity uh, to talk about some important things. Mike, you know that we love it when bad things happen to bad people. Yes, and this is a, a we're not so big that we can't look down and you know scrape the gutter. No, this is a story in, in which. There is uh, something happened. Not sure what that meant, but something, I just said it. Something bad happened to a guy, and for that we feel sad. But the circumstances surrounding what happened to the guy, right, are pretty great. Really? Let me say the guy wore uh, the the guy worked for Disney. Okay. Okay. So you know we we love uh, we love Disney. We love everything Disney. We're we're the only disc jockeys in America. And I'm not kidding. We've been making this. fun of Disney for a million years. We are banned. I, I mean, it's not like they won't take our money. I've I've been there with my kid uh, on vacation, but we won't we, ever we won't be do allowed a broadcast. to do a broadcast. As a show, you. we're banned. We're banned. We're banned from two places. We're banned from Graceland, uh -huh. and we're banned from Walt Disney World. Right. Oh, wow. So ever since we've we've uh, decided, whenever there's something that uh, you know is really good to spotlight this, sure, week, we'd uh, like to bring it to you. <laughs> and uh, this headline, uh, Mike, I, I've had it for a couple of days, so I bring it to your attention. Pluto killed in parade. Oh, my God. Yeah. Disney parade turned to horror <laughs> as a worker dressed as Pluto was crushed to death by a float. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, this is where I'm saying you got the bad part of the story, and the bad part is for Javier Cruz. For Check Javier. those papers, please. Mm -hmm. Wearing a costume of the kid's favorite. He's he's the guy that we feel bad bad for. Right. Yeah, because right. he's <laughs> just one of the workers. He's the guy that was run over backstage as he was walking at the end of the parade. Oh mm. my! Was he was he run over uh, out in front of anybody or was it backstage? He was just about to walk through the crowds at the Magic Kingdom. Mm. Uh, Disney last night insisted the shocking accident happened out of sight of thousands of children. You know, I those those uh, goofy heads. Cut down on your peripheral. Yeah. At 525 local time, when they started their evening parade, he had been Pluto for eight years. Wow. Uh, it's a good Disney, long run. Disney said, and I'm going to quote uh, Disney. He's 24 in dog years. Mm -hmm. It's a horrible tragedy. To my knowledge, there's never been an accident like this before. Poor Pluto. Oh. Did they say poor Pluto? Yeah. And then it says... Poor Mr. Cruz. Wow. Clearly, it's a difficult and tragic day for all of us. Clearly. So no customers were affected. So well, they, 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 they can know, sweep this under the Disney like, carpet. Like, like, like I thought with the uh, American Idol thing. I think that's a, a, a setup. I, I think also here, yeah, that uh, people saw it, but they were all given uh, toys mm -hmm. and, and candy. And sent it. on their way and told not to speak to the press. Because it says, Disney last night insisted the shocking accident happened out of th sight of thousands of children. I thought when the story broke that uh, it did happen in front of people. That's what so I mean. And they had like an aerial shot of it, didn't and they? This, like this where it happened. Right. This is the Disney spin. Right. That, the, the, well, they hate anything like this. And they, well, you know, they, now it gets out in spite of them. Don, I think of all the all the tragic deaths that have not been reported. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Think about, and not only those who proudly serve wearing those, mm -hmm. those incredibly bad, stinky uniforms. Yeah, but your monorail operators mm -hmm. you know, what about, fall into their deaths. What about your pedestrians? Huh? Yes, your pedestrians. You you want to talk about your Amber Alert, right? Right. You know how many happens. how many young children have have been maimed, disfigured by those by those crazy teapot rides? And because the pockets are so deep, you know, never never speak a word. And then they go, well, "What happened to Amber? Well, she's gone." Oh, wait, hold on! They're giving us free mouse ears. Let's go home. Who, who cares about who, who cares about Amber? A crazy dagger comes loose in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Exactly, impaling a, an unwary citizen. So within an inch of their lives. Mm -hmm. Now they're past this. Pluto, Dad. Pluto got run over in the parade. They're and that's past the, really. And the Disney statement says, "Poor Pluto." Poor Pluto. Wow, uh, that's weird. Yeah. The Disney is buying the Muppets again. 
Buying them back? Buying them back. Who bought it? They bought them from Jim Henson. They bought them from D Jim they, Henson. They okay. talked about it, then now they've actually bought the company. Okay, uh, the company EMTV bought the Jim Henson company, that's the Muppets, right. uh, three years ago for $680 million. Uh, the company sold it back to the Henson family last July for $70 million. Henson is now is the Henson family uh, selling it now to Walt Disney. Uh, they, they, Disney, I love the Disney press releases. Disney announced they will buy the Muppets characters. This isn't their press release. Yeah, we Disney, will buy the Muppet characters. Disney will buy the Muppet characters, including Kermit, mm -hmm. Miss Piggy, as well as. Bear in the Blue House. The Bear in the Big Blue House. Right. Sorry, it just says Bear in the Blue House. I right. No idea what it is. You don't know who the Bear in the Big Blue House is? No. I do not. Oh, it's one of my favorites. I thought his name was Mel Carmison. <laughs> no, no. This is a wonderful character. Uh, so is Mr. Carmison. Of course. A wonderful character. Oh, a delightful character. Mike? Yes, Don? Keith Richards? Where's my tape of Keith Richards? Bacardi Limon. No, hold on. No, that's not oh, Keith. Hold on. The, oh, there. Uh, hey, this is Keith. Yeah, the riches to John and Mike. There you go. That's our tape of Keith Richards. This is Keith. Yeah, the riches to John and Mike. Yeah. Uh, we hear it a third time. Oh, sure. Of course. <laughs> uh, hey, this is Keith. Yeah, the riches to John and Mike. There you go. He's fine. Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards is living on borrowed time. In oh, fact... No. Back. They've been saying that for 30 years. He should have died in 1995. Uh, there's a guy, we're trying to get this guy on the, sh on the show, a doctor, has calculated the various expiration dates of celebrities and says <laughs> that the average guy who experienced Keith Richards and his lifestyle should have been dead at age 52. <laughs> wow. However, Keith Richards just turned 60, and uh, this, this doctor also predicts, <laughs> he says Whitney Houston's 40. She's gonna she's gonna make it to fifty nine. That's it. He's already clocked her out at fifty nine. So he does formulas. Yes, Ozzy, who is fifty five. Mm -hmm. He says Ozzy, hard to pinpoint Ozzy. Yeah. But he won't make it ten more. Really? It's less than ten for Ozzy. Wow. And and Michael Jackson, the kid toucher, he's forty five now. Uh huh. He predicts Michael Jackson has 30 more years, so he's going to be 75. Oh so he's going to live a long life. Still looking like that uh, the creepy uh, fairy that he is. What about Larry King? Now, those will be the funny formulas. Uh, <laughs> Two years. Uh, also, uh, how about, Mike, I know you like uh, a lot of uh, America. You love 50 Cent, don't you? I love 50 Cent. He's I love the Band-Aid. He's fantastic. He will live uh, until he's 77. 77 years old, still making great music. There you go. The uh, <laughs> Paris, Paris Hilton videotape. Uh, who hasn't seen it? Well, I loved it. The guy, well, you're going to love it even more, Mike, uh, because the guy that banged her, the, the guy's name is it's Rick. Rick Solomon. I want to call him Rick. Who is the Rick from uh, Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire? That, 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 Rick Rockwell. Rick Rockwell. Rick Rockwell. Okay. This Rick. And this guy, Rick Solomon, is uh, it, uh, he, you don't make him any sleazier <laughs> than this guy. Hold on. He he just wants every. We got a press release. Uh, a, he wants. To make two things very clear, all of those grainy club, clips that you've seen, all of the the, the stuff that looks like a, the night vision, night vision stuff that you've yeah. seen, that's not him. He has nothing to do with those tapes on the internet. But the brand new, full color, full length pay per view download, that is his deal, <laughs> and he thinks it's going to be great. It's a beautiful tape. Everyone is going to enjoy it. So, it's, so he's got another sex video it's, I, that he's I, offering up for pay-per-view? Yes. Yes, he is. How and can he do that? 38 minutes. He says he owns the tape. It's his. Uh, Paris Hilton uh, is not going to be stoked. Uh, here's the deal. You pay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through all of the, uh, the paperwork now. You pay five bucks for five days. And over those five days... You can watch the 37 minutes of high-quality sex footage, <laughs> as well as stunning, crisp images. Well done. You can watch it as many times as you like. It's like a blockbuster thing. You bring it, get it on Monday. You don't bring it back till Friday. Wow. You can you can watch it. As, now, do they think this is going to be that, that he's really going to be able to get this out and distribute it and get it out there well, where this, everybody can this see guy, it? Rick Rockwell, excuse me, Rick Salomon. Rick Rockwell. <laughs> It says he expects to make anywhere from thirty million 
to a hundred million dollars for the sale of downloading this sex tape with Paris Hilton. He's made several million just in this first week that it's been out. So it's already out. Yeah, it's been out since he's, I think Thursday. He says now I'm quoting him here now. Have you had a look, Buzz? Uh, just a peek, yes. From some. You have. Oh, have you really? How is just it? Just a little bit. I haven't seen the whole thing. Yet. Is it better than the, the, the yeah. light vision? Thing? Yeah, because it is. It, the lighting is better, and therefore it's in color. <laughs> it's what he. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> I love. I love the quote from the guy. Every bit as crisp as he promised. Just <laughs> such the dumb guy. All I know is, and it always good. All I know is. All I know. All I know is, I got the rights. It's my video. I shot it. I own it. My camera. My video. And I know that he doesn't talk with a southern accent, but it's funny. Right. Make him, Sounds like it. Make him sound that way. All I know, everybody said I did this tape. Everybody thought I did it. I've just been getting ridiculed forever. And now I did it. But I didn't do it in the beginning. So what's his deal? I mean, and what's her deal? Is she going to try to fight it? Or, well, I guess it's too she, late they, for that. The Hilton family hasn't responded yet. She hasn't responded. He says she's probably steamed at him. He says he plans to go the surfing. La the, last thing that, <laughs> the last thing that the guy says, uh, is, somebody says to this guy, you got bad publicity, you know, you're kind of a creep, you taped it, uh, you're having sex. Right. Here's his quote. I enjoy videotaping, actually. It's sort of fun. <laughs> He's a moron. <laughs> He's going to be a wealthy moron. Though. Thanks, he is. But that'll, that'll yeah. pay for his legal battles. Yeah. Right? Now, listen, uh, uh, apologies. I only wish that this apology that we had to do yesterday could have been like the one. I don't know if you saw Conan O'Brien. <laughs> there was the, we talked about this yesterday, the, the, the puppet. Who was doing a bit. triumph the insult comic dog? Right, the puppet was doing a bit. Now I know it's a guy that puts his hand in there and does the voice, and the guy's incredible, and it's you one mean of the, the dog's not real. The funny, it's one of the funniest <laughs> bits ever. Yeah. It's it's all it is great always. So they do this thing about uh, Quebec, and the Canadians they get all all pissed. So Conan O'Brien, someone at NBC says to him, "You have to apologize." What did he do about the the Canadians? Um, uh, I thought they were digging his show up there. They were. Um, people of Quebec. And listen, this is, this is what's funny. He I, did the show from Toronto. Yeah. I have the, the transcript of what he said uh, last night. Uh, they had part of it. As he would speak in English, they had an announcer that would say stuff in French. Right. That didn't line up with what he was saying in English. <laughs> okay. So he comes. I'm on, laughing so far. Yeah. So he comes on last night and he says, uh, "So like uh, people of uh, people of Quebec, I am sorry. Uh, it is translated. So when when he says that, then they go merci blah 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 blah. And what he's just said is people of Quebec, I'm an albino jackass. <laughs> <laughs> then he then he says uh, we meant no harm with our comedy piece the other night. Uh, that was translated in French. <laughs> it said. The other night, I wet the bed like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, uh, I was a stranger in a strange land, and I was very insensitive. And the French... Tra <laughs> now, I only wish that we had been allowed <laughs> right. to apologize in the same manner. Well, uh, we were ours was wish. directed towards a non-French speaking. Uh, I right. Well, we're heard in Audience Canada. Audience there. Yeah. We're heard in Canada. We are heard in Canada. Anyway, just what was the bit that he had to apologize? Or did he really even have to apologize? Obviously not. I don't I remember it exactly but he was insulting French Canadians specifically. Oh, it was so the that... dog saying, you know, how could you live there oh, with you? The oh, dog right. said, I can smell your crotch from here. That was one of, <laughs> one of the dog's lines. As far as that stuff goes, it was pretty tame. Right, right, right they, exactly. They, over, they overreacted. Right. Uh, okay, uh, Rick Dees. <laughs> oh, Mike, uh, before I play Rick Dees again, I'll tell you, uh, the lady that was Madge, the manicurist. Match the manicurist. I know you. I know you. It's been a lifelong dream, but to pork her. Yeah, I mean, I was always hot for it. You're always soaking in it. Oh man, I wanted to soak in it. Well, now you're going to be able to have her the way you've always wanted. Oh really? <laughs> She's dead. <laughs> yeah. Have her the way I always wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Me, Johnny Necrophilia. <laughs> Mike, for the longest time, is it yeah. my biggest sexual fantasy to have <laughs> sex with Madge the manicurist? <laughs> She's dead. Yeah, right. Of course. Got well, that's. Dead. Great tragedy, Don. Um, anyway, she's she's dead, Mike. Madge. Mm -hmm. Madge the manicurist. Madge was old way back when. Oh. Jan Minner, that's uh, that's her name. You're sucking in it. She was so tough. Uh, <laughs> kind of a tough but, uh, but feisty bro. And Ryan, then you've no. got uh, oh. the Ryan, <laughs> so Ryan, Ryan Seacrest. We talked uh, yesterday oh. about this. He's uh, taking uh, Rick D's job away. Uh, you know, and I got a thought about Ryan Seacrest that gets back to American Idol. I'm watching it last night. 
Enough with Ryan Seacrest, okay? Mm -hmm. He's not that. Have you have you heard his new uh, exit line? You know, Seacrest out. Oh. Have you heard that? That's what he says at the end of the show. Douchebag out. He says Seacrest out, or or like Seacrest, I'm out. <laughs> and then and then they're now dickhead out. Ryan Seacrest commercials now. Oh no, those so you have to watch American Idol with the Ryan Seacrest commercials. Oh. I mean, you know what I read? Enough, though? he's not that good. Right. Here's what I read. I read that. The people that run American Idol, and Simon is one of the, the producers. Or American Idol's Idol definitely tied into the ad. Yeah. But here's the thing. They're upset with the fact that he's got a daily TV show, and he's got a, a radio show in the morning, mm -hmm. that he's not going to devote uh, enough of his energy to uh, American Idol, like he's such a, a scary part of the show. Right. And to show how important he is, I read this, I can't remember where, but I swear to Christ I read that they were quoted as saying they would bring back, if Ryan Seacrest's schedule got too crowded, they would bring back Dunkelman. Ryan Dunkelman. Brian, the other guy? <laughs> they the would bring guy. back the other guy, because that's how little they think the host has to do with it. <laughs> well, right. the host doesn't have anything to do it's with true. it. It's true. Right, but he's... I mean, you know, the guy you, you can't lose is that guy, Simon. Right. I mean, that's the show. But uh, Simon uh, apparently thinks that Ryan Seacrest is overextending himself. He's overextending himself by taking... The radio show away from Rick D's. It's really just a cheap way to play this one more time. Thank God we didn't have to play this. We weren't fired a couple of days ago. That's right. With our own version. Good morning. This is Rick D's in the morning. I hope you're feeling great today. I am, Rick. It's an honor and a privilege to host the number one revenue-generating yeah. radio show of its kind in you're America. So, you're so great, Rick. How exciting it is to know that this morning radio program brings in more money than any other of its kind. Rick, you're going to be able to laugh when Ryan Seacrest fails. The <laughs> Top 40 continues to be the number one contemporary oh, music countdown of the world. Uh, do you pray for me, Rick? Millions of listeners in countries with names that are difficult to pronounce. What about my buddy Mike? Do you pray for him? In many more years pray for of counting me, down the hits around the world and on Armed Forces Radio, too. They were even on in Beijing every hey, you know weekend. What? Now. You know, now you're playing it for the second day. It's more pompous the and, second day. Yeah. Here's how it, it reads in the uh, Los Angeles Number newspaper. Number one. We're just so happy. <laughs> After 23 years in morning drive at KIIS Los Angeles, Rick Dees uh, on Tuesday said goodbye to radio listeners and hung up the headphones in a pre-recorded announcement that aired repeatedly throughout last Tuesday's show. Oh, okay. So this is not a one that's like every time you turn on the radio, you hear this right piece of crap. Uh, yeah, it's been decided I'll no longer be the morning man. Uh, Dees said while ratings go up and down, his show continues to be number one revenue ge generating. That's something a loser says. Uh, he owes a debt of gratitude to his family. Well, all the stuff that we heard. Uh, blah, blah. Oh, now listen to this one. This is the point that I don't get. Station sources tell uh, the Times that a financial multi-million dollar five-year deal to continue as morning host was offered to D's. Hmm. He turned it down. He turned it down. Ain't that something? Well, I mean, what, is that, did, he, did he want more more money? Is that I what it was? I mean, maybe, well, some, it'll come out. Isn't there any way we could have avoided this? No. And it's right here on KISS FM. <laughs> To my wife, Julie, all my love. All my love. To my son, Kevin, buddy, you are the original listener. Buddy. Even before you were born. It has been decided that I will no longer be doing the daily morning radio show on KISS FM. Oh. Now, how do you say goodbye to someone who means so much to you? How do you, Rick? The listener. Someone whom you've literally awakened for years. Yeah, Someone to whom you've gently God. said, wake up. Or maybe pompous. not so gently. <laughs> it's a new day. Let's okay. get going. All right. Let's cheer you up God. with maybe a story or a joke. <laughs> a wild character it's on the big. telephone. You know what? This is like Sorry, spaghetti. Wake up. Buddy. Really, this Sorry, is like homemade spaghetti. spaghetti. It's better the second day. <laughs> but I promise. It really if I possibly is. can, I'm going to cushion the blow for you. You know, I predict this is going to get addictive. And hopefully make you feel better. All right, stop it uh, right there. Don. Mike. Oh, my love. Phone <laughs> scan right now. And Mike, I pray for you and your family every day before this show. You are the original listener, buddy. Phone scan, 877-365-3636. From anywhere in America, from Canada, don't be pissed. Just call 800-636-1067. The uh, world-famous rotating uh, random phone scan dial recklessly lies straight ahead. This is the Don and Mike Show. Strickland Propane tastes the meat, not the heat. Hello, Hank? Speaking. How you doing? It's Matt. 
Uh, who is this? Consenting Adults, the country's largest supplier of mail-order adult entertainment. Somebody can put you down for. Uh, zero. God, please, watch your mouth. This is an interstate phone line. How did you get this number? Not important. What is important is that we have a bigger selection and lower prices than Arlen Video. What? Arlen Video told you I rent pornography? Uh, uh, <laughs> who plays the most hits? Y-104. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Crazy morning zoo. The Don and Mike Show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. You had the coolest mom. She smells like miracle man. Mildly cross-eyed. Don Geronimo and Michael Mara. Right. Got a mystery guest coming up in a couple of seconds. I know who it is. Oh, did you really? No. You look it up where you didn't? No. <laughs> really? I'm just playing with you. Oh, we're good. I do that. I'm a playful guy. We'll play, you play, and, and Buzz uh, will play, and then we'll get the people on the telephone to play. And, uh, I, like, I like to not know when, it, when it's a mystery guest. Well, he... Well, I've already given that part away. He... Uh, oh. Maybe you're lying, though. Maybe I am. Ah! She... Mm. Let me just say he is a he... Okay. But he would be a beautiful she. <laughs> okay, there's that's, a hint. That's the only clue I'll give you about okay. uh, the a mystery guest coming up. Oh, man. Okay, Al Molinaro again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, far. <laughs> Phone scan 877-365-3636. I mean, after all, remember the show you're listening to. Yeah, I understand. We uh, we, we don't take the B celebrities. Those, they're too good. Uh, what, what did I write down? Hold on. Uh, in my notes, hold on a second. I, Is this a C celebrity? Um, just how far have they fallen ah. is, is what I wrote wow. Very good. As, as the clue for this for this celebrity. This wonderful celebrity that will be joining us in a minute. All right. Uh, now your call at 877-365-3636 and 800-636-1067 from Canada. Hello there. Don and Mike Show. Phone scan. Hello. Hello. How you doing, fellas? We're doing great. Robert the Mailman. Hey, hey Robert. Robert. How are you? Hey, B.A. Yourself? I got a quick couple of things. Yes. I'm going to do that. I'm not cooking this crap, man. Hey, uh, Robert, what kind of what kind of phone are you on? I'm on a cell phone. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, Robert is in charge of our uh, white guys eating uh, soul food for Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And Robert, you're calling this N. It was N F F N three N three F. Yeah, N three F, which stands for Food Fear Factor. Negro food, Negro food fear factor. Mm. Right. And you said you're not you, you don't want to cook this stuff. I don't cook this crap, man. I'm going to come in tomorrow. I have the whole list of everything that I, I'm going to give for you boys. Mm. I can go to Maryland and they got soul food restaurants that whip it all this crap catered or whatever. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. But yeah. me to cook this stuff because we don't have to eat it anymore. I told Charlie last week when you first came up with this idea, I hate soul food. God knows how to push my buttons, boy, because I really do hate soul food. <laughs> I thought about it. Look at that. There's idea. a black man that hates soul food. Now, are we going to be allowed to uh, to participate in this as well? Will you be enjoying any of the soul food, Don? I will not, Mike. I will. I will. I will not, and I'll tell you. I would love to sample. I will not because it's black food. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Because you know, Robert, I only eat white food. <laughs> you milk toast and your Sprite and Twinkies on the side. <laughs> milk toast. No, right. hey, Robert, I got news for you. Excuse me. The brothers drink Sprites. Whatever, man. No, no, no. Don't give me whatever. Robert, I got a question for you. Bro brothers like orange and, and grape, but mainly Sprite. I, I soda. Yes, I love grape punch. Yeah, whatever. Cool. I know. Yeah, hey, uh, Robert, what is, in your opinion, would be the nastiest uh, soul food item that uh, that a person could eat? Um... Personally, it's, it's the chitlins. See, I'd love to try chitlins if they're if they're prepared the right way. You can get that. You can get that by the barrel. I'm gonna bring you a ton of that. Bring some chitlins. I'll enjoy some chitlins. Robert, Robert, for goodness sakes, this is during a regular phone scan. Hold on a second, Joe. Uh, figure out uh, Robert's time and schedule when he's coming down here with mm. with the soul food for the eat off. Rob, haven't we talked about that before? I Hello. mean, I know it's Rob Speedway. I think Rob and I were talking about. Wasn't there an article like in the Post or something about chitlins? Today we were actually we talked about it in an airport. I remember <laughs> yeah, about chitlins. Chit chitterlings are supposed to be delightful if they're properly cleaned. Right, right. They're, right. they're, they're intestines. Clean. Yeah, they're hog intestines. All right, yeah. Brian, I'll so eat. you're like on Fear Factor. I will. Well, I, you know, I will do, because this is a uh, this is popular stuff. I'm Bad gonna eat it and fry it. Anything tastes <laughs> bad. Absolutely. Hello, Don and Mike. 
I crap my pants on the treadmill. <laughs> okay. Honey, I told you don't call again. I've already talked to you. Today. Boy, she must have a cold. Hey, how great is that? My wife grabbed her. She's, she's going to be so mad. That That's I this morning, that. right? This morning. She grabbed her pants this morning. She wearing one of those, like, workout pants? Yeah, she had those, uh, you know, those like, things. bicycle pants on. Oh. Yeah. Hello, Don and Mike show. She, <laughs> she just had all... Nowhere to run. She had all of her, all of her clothes in a little plastic bag. Yeah. She just bring it out to the garbage. Really? Hello. Hey guys! I said, "Welcome to my world." Christ, <laughs> I think I know. I think I know how you can stay in good standing with the network. If uh, if Mike does a little bit more of uh, gets a little bit more Mister Sincerity, gets some airtime. If what? Mister Sincerity gets a little bit more airtime. Who's Mister Sincerity? Mike, Mike, your character who comes on and acts uh, very sincere to all it's, of the callers. Pipe down. It's more of a, a like something you do as a throwaway, but you've done Mr. False Sincerity. Oh, you mean with, do I actually name it? I'm you sorry. Never not named the, it I, I should right remember the, the stuff that I do, but I don't. Uh, this guy is named it. It's just the throwaway you do. You mean I when like, I'm when I'm really like this talking? I mean, I'm more like, hey, hey, super. Yes, yes, and, and thank you for calling, and you know, and of oh, course yeah. now and, and now half off, douchebag. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't be too hard on. Me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Don and Mike, hello. <laughs> Radio God. Hi. Hey, hey, Mike, you know, you never need to have to worry about getting fired. Do, do you know what Maine humor is? You've got a killer Maine accent. Yeah. Do you have any idea how much money these guys make up here? You go to an Elks Lodge, you go to anything, they make like 15 grand in a weekend. You mean you know? doing like Bert and I going into an Elks Lodge? Absolutely. Now, I know that that's the career that... <laughs> Thanks for the tip. That's, that's the career that you're looking at after this show runs out, yeah. to go to Maine and perform at an Elks Lodge. I'll tell you right now, we'll just go there and say, hello, <laughs> let's get ready for the pancake supper. I got some baked beans over here, too. Hello, Don and Mike's right, and I'll combine it with... Thank you so much. <laughs> so Hello, this is Larry King. Welch's purple grape juice has the most antioxidants per fluid ounce. Right. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hi there. Hi. From Canada. Uh, congratulations. What can we do for you? Thank you. I'm, I just wanted to talk to Don and Mike about... Um, Sorry. Conan. Violation. Conan. Sorry. Sorry. Violation. First violation found guilty of your Canadian. Oh. Second violation, you didn't know that you were talking to us. Third violation, you're Canadian. Man, I'm, and I root for my Canadian brothers, but the, they just haven't stepped up. Hello, Don and Mike show. But I thank you. <laughs> I mean, right now, I'd have to say the mightiest Canadian would be Jim Carrey. Bruce hey. Almighty, he's the best that Canada's got to offer. Okay, way to diss Alex Trebek. <laughs> he's in my top five. <laughs> my top five all-time Canadians. And, you know, hey, you know, there's a guy shaking up in Vermont that you're forgetting, too. Oh, you know? oh, the guy that wrote the letter? No, Michael J. Fox. Oh. <laughs> and also the Gordon Lightfoot, <laughs> Gordon Lightfoot discussion boards are going to be all of them. I know, and, and Brian Adams and Anne Murray and all Peter the rest Jennings. of them. Not Anne Murray. Peter Jennings. <laughs> Not Anne Murray? <laughs> Not Anne Murray. I don't, no, she's Canadian. I don't still think she's great. <laughs> I think there's another one, too. Isn't Adam Sandler Canadian? No. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You're on the air. How you doing, Mike? Don? Yes, hi, we're here. Uh, how are you doing? I just want to comment about uh, Conan O'Brien and uh, the whole French thing. I thought that was quite funny. And nobody likes the French anyway up here. So. Can anybody prove definitively to me that Adam Sandler is not Canadian? Yeah. Oh, yeah I'll, I'll can, bet, can I'll bet you absolutely, you name it, and I'll bet it that Adam Sandler's not Canadian. How much you want to bet? We don't bet money. But thank you for offering. Would you would you like would you like to bet something like uh, having to go outside and do something? No. Even if it's something as simple as going outside of the microphone and singing "O Canada" for an hour. For an hour. For an hour. During the show. Half an hour. Half an hour done. Deal. Are you like one thousand? Have you read like a bio or something? I, I swear I haven't read a bio. You have any information I on where I'm, he's born? No. It is a gut feeling. I have a gut feeling he's a New Yorker. All right. I know this. He's a Jew. Well, there's there there are Jewish guys in Canada. <laughs> like Paul Schaefer was from Paul Canada. Schaefer. He's Jewish. Okay, that's one. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'll say that uh, he is, and I say he's not, and it, it is the bet. Do I get the lyrics? <laughs> yeah, or, or I'd say the same for me. Do I get the lyrics? I, I yes. have the answer. And okay. the answer is he was born in Brooklyn in 1966. <laughs> that's Brooklyn, right. Ontario. That's right. It's my man. Brooklyn, Ontario. That's my man. <laughs> That's my all-American man, Adam Sandler. So now let me write this in my notes. You want to do this at the beginning of the show tomorrow? Yeah, all right. First break, Mike sings Canadian National Anthem for 30 minutes. It only has to be the first break. 
25 minutes. I can stand, like, over by the doors? Yeah. Well, outside. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't have to stand by the window. Please? All right. I want to be able to see you while you're doing this outside. All right. There you go. Downloading oh, the lyrics now. Oh, man. You Thank go. you, Buzz. Man, my, uh, you know, I, I wasn't even thinking. I, you know, I'm just, I still haven't got my bearings yet. You can sing the song to A-Rod. You can dedicate it Oh, there it is. There it is. It didn't take... You didn't have time yesterday, but hey, you haven't forgotten, have you? Plenty of time today. You bet. All right. A-Rod. Bonus. Effer. On tomorrow's show. Michael Maris singing the uh, Canadian National Anthem. For, I'll sing it with gusto. For the entire uh, opening break of the show tomorrow. Hello, Don and Mike. Okay, is it just Don the opening Mike. break? Yeah. Okay. 30 minutes. Why? Uh, Don and Mike. Would you have a problem another time? What do you mean? Would you have a problem with it being later in the show? No, I want to. I want to get it over with. Really? Why is that? Why are you torturing me? I have to agree on when t what time it is. Why did you ask though about? I wasn't thinking. Why is the early? Part Look, I'm all the... I'm all discombobulated now. You know, it started out with that guy with a nice thing about a character I don't know. I do. Yo, don't forget that. Do you want to you want to sing at the beginning of the show or in the middle of the show? Buzz has lyrics. I'll I'll get out of the way right now. Oh, no, you can't today. We have a very busy... Uh, I'll do it at today. the beginning of the show, at the very beginning of the show. Beginning of the show tomorrow. Fantastic. Look forward to it. Thank you. I'll be in good voice. Don and Mike. Don and Mike. Hi. Tonight on The King of Queens, your favorite television actress, Leah Remini, has a special guest star, her own husband. Oh, Angelo Pagan's going yes. to be on? Yes, along with uh, Kevin Jane's fiance. <laughs> oh my God! It's, you know it's almost too bad we're not talking to her anymore. I know. I wish we could yeah. reopen that dialogue. Just, but that would be a very short dialogue. Cause it would be, hey, how is it with your husband, the flapjacker? Yeah, what's the deal? <laughs> how long? You know, how are your coattails doing? On this show and Kevin's fiance on there. Well, they've, the show's gone out of control. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if Robert the mailman is going to bring like hog head cheese in. Pig's brains for the soul what food. What he said thing. was he's going to go to uh, one of the nicer soul food restaurants. And well, you're the expert calling in to make sure Robert gets this covered properly? Yeah, thanks, Whitey. Hello, Don, <laughs> Don and Mike Show. Hello. Hello, Don. Yeah, because you, you want to go to one of the nicer soul food restaurants. That's right. Suppose the not so nice soul yeah, food Yeah, upscale soul food. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Don, Mike, yeah, does. Hey. How come you guys doing? On. Come on, we're doing very well. Thank you. Move on, please. Well, good. We used to. My wife and I used to listen to you guys in Greenville, South Carolina. That's fantastic. Did I ask you for a freaking bio, or are you calling a radio show? <laughs> oh, Don, Mike, Buzz, come on, guys. We love you. Guys. What do you want? We moved up here to Frank. Just wanted to no, tell you. No, you just want your you bio. You want your bio on the Goodbye. air. Hello, Don hi. Don and Mike show. Hello, go to eHarmony.com. <laughs> Hello, Don and Don Mike. Don Geronimo, Rick Dees, formerly of the morning, checking in on your random rotating phone scale. Yeah, all right. Hi, Don and Mike show. International radio superstar God. I'm phoning from lovely Toronto, Canada right now. <laughs> all right, so, God, God or, calling in. I'm guilty of uh, violation one and three, being Canadian. I just like to tell you... Uh, I give you my thoughts on French Canadians, but you'd probably get uh, they want you executed in Montreal. They'd probably send you to the guillotines. Don't you think it would it would be a good thing if we just said only Americans can call the show? No, it, no, it's okay for Canadians. No, to I listen. know. I know. No. Stop it. Stop it. Of you don't course not. You to listen to you guys. I got such a bad antenna on my car. I go to school in Toronto, around the lake. I got to sit by the lake for four hours. And I, I'm going to go one step <laughs> further. I'm not going to let you diss French Canadians, my friend. Yeah, and it's but Rob loved, Rob loved you and Happy Gilmore. <laughs> I got French Canadian in me, pal. Don and Mike, hello. Hello, Don and Mike. How are hey. you? We're great, Mike, thanks. Um, do, you like, do you guys know that they pay a million dollars for Conan to come up here and, and kiss his ass for a week? Is this another call from Canada? Yeah, it's a string of them. You know what? No. Forget it. Hey, can we help it? That we're, This show's imme immensely it's, popular. It's like the string of bad singers on American Idol. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Hi, Don and Mike. How you doing? Hi, there. Hi you're on the air. Hi, I'm good. I, I, I'm glad you guys brought up that fat cow, Lisa Remini, because I got a little story that kind of pertains to her. All right. Um, remember, I, I texted a few weeks ago and I told you that Paula Abdul had given me syphilis about the mouth region, uh, and then I had reported her because it was my duty. Well, anyway, the results came back, and uh, my doctor... Hold on, I don't remember a guy calling... I don't remember that. I don't remember you calling us saying that Paula Abdul gave you syphilis. Yeah. He's referring back to the video we watched of Joe, yeah. that it was his duty to report Paula Abdul. Oh, it was my duty. I had okay. to. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, and speaking of Joe and his movies, yeah. they're back. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Joe's movie choice is, I believe, uh, The Dangers of Narcotics in General. Yeah. 
And Narcotics. With a great and narration. Yeah. Yes, yeah, all of the time. 1967. With a fabulous Joe. narration or so. Joe's movie reviews. <laughs> anyway. It seems, that, it seems that I owe Mr. Abdul a, uh, an apology because the result came back and I actually contracted the disease from eating a bowl of soup at Vivian's. <laughs> <laughs> Bye now. He's so Bye now. He's so happy with himself. Yeah. He made me laugh. Yeah, it was good. Hello. Thank you for calling. Don and Mike, hello. <laughs> Yeah, Don and Mike show. Hello there. What's up? Track lighting. God damn, I don't. I got a limited amount of answers for that. <laughs> that wouldn't have happened if he was Canadian. Don and Mike. Hello. He was. No. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know where he was calling from. Hello, I'm just Don. Thinking and Mike. about singing tomorrow. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Jack calling in from America. Thanks. Hey, uh, Dennis Franz up your ante last night. I am pissed. I want a. Apology from Michael Eisner and two weeks of his salary. Nine minutes into NYPD Blue last night, they said the word you got suspended for. Well, and I, I know what mm -hmm. I, I know what they're going to say. Their out is that right. it was After during ten o'clock at night. Their, yeah, the safe harbor time. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Must be threw in two a holes. Listen, as uh, as that guy saying, it's five thirty somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. Right. No matter when you say the word BS. Right. It's always it's five thirty somewhere. Mm -hmm. Nice that people are looking out for us though. Appreciate it. Hi, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Call and you got any iPods left? Yes, we do have iPods left. Make yeah, keep, keep listening. We might have one for you later. The last person on the phone scan is going to get one today. Hello, Very Don good. and Mike show. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Don Mike, I just wanted to say something. Mike said he had French Canadian in him. Yes. Uh, what's his name? Ah! Uh, <laughs> it took you a while to get to it. I saw it coming, but it was good. Yeah. Don and Mike, hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Hey, let me tell you what kind of idiots the Canadians are. All right. In, in Buffalo, New York, they have a radio show on in the morning, and they have a skit that they call Moo at the Canadian. They actually call up Canadians, move to them on the telephone. These idiots, instead of hanging up, actually move back. <laughs> Yeah, that's I've been, great. Radio. They're idiots. <laughs> Not you. Not you, pal. Hey. No, I'm from Buffalo. Moo. Yes. Moo. Hold on a second. Come on. Moo. I well, can't hear you because his radio's turned up too loud. Are you still there? No. Douche, hello? Oh. Uh, he jumped off. He's so scary smart. Hey, if only he would have said moo, that would have been the perfect end. Hello, Don and Mike show. He just thought hey, his wife was on Don the extension. Mike, buzz. Hi there. Want to scoop buzz. All right, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I heard uh, they they signed uh, Michael J. Fox's chocolate, uh, chocolate milk commercial. It's a, jo it's a joke. Is that right? Is it a joke or is it a real story, Buzz? It, no, I'm done. It's a joke, you know, shaking the chocolate milk. I'm right. sure. Oh, Something you know, like you're that. a, that's, that's a violation. violation. You're calling, you're oh. calling yeah. with a yeah. joke. You're calling a lot of violations. No dollar today. six for you, my friend. Don and Mike, I'm just trying to give away a prize for the last call. And that movie thing reminds me of my favorite Far Side cartoon. Have you seen the one where the uh, cows are driving by the, the field of people going yak, yak, yak? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that cartoon. Oh. Don and Mike, hello. <laughs> so does Don. Don, how you doing? <laughs> oh, I do. Not. <laughs> no, you don't. I hate the forest. I know. I know you do. I hate the whole funny page thing. I, I mean, know. I like Blondie. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, that's great. Yeah, that Dagwood sandwich, man. <laughs> He is. He was laying on the couch always. He is out of his mouth. Is z z z z always. You don't like the Far Side. I really didn't know that until just this moment. No, I got pissed at my wife this morning. I was waiting to to look at the newspaper uh -huh. to look at the, the the sports is what I look at first. Then I look at the part that has like the TV stuff, mm -hmm. and she's just going on and on and on looking at it. I find I realize I didn't say anything to her. She's reading the comics, right? Baby, I need to read about how American Idol did last night on TV. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, she's holding this thing two inches from her face, staring at whatever must be what you like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I read uh, the only one I pay any attention to. Somebody gave me a book of the Far Side. Yeah, I had that in there, and I probably have never picked up the Far Side before that or after. I heard that uh, something uh, did something happen to Kathy. The, uh, the I don't follow Kathy. I don't. Is, you don't? No. I heard she had an abortion. <laughs> I think she might be getting married. Oh, uh, I, th I thought she had syphilis. No, no. I kept hearing something was happening to the to the, the abortion was in the family circus. <laughs> and see, now I've opened up. Kathy. Now I've opened up the cartoon bag, and yeah. Mark, which you're technically really into. And I heard that Mark Trail. It was the father. <laughs> Mark Trail was the father. Now yeah. you're laughing. And you know who got who did the abortion was Rex Morgan, M.D. 
and he's in he danger was, of losing his license. And now, I'll be and honest he was with helped. you, they're out of touch with everybody because I don't and, know what they're talking about. And Rex Morgan was helped by Mary Ward. That's very true. Uh, he's, now Brenda Starr won't even up. respond his phone calls. But fortunately, they're all going to be up. in apartment 3D. <laughs> Shut up! Beetle Bailey asked and told. Oh, you guys. He did, and then they went to the Wizard of Ed. Mm -hmm. And I, here's the deal. All I brought up was the far side. <laughs> I know. God help Which us is all. Funny. Yeah. I hate I hate the far side. Yeah, but you know all that other crap. I hate all that too. You do. <laughs> hey, hello, last call. But Superman. Hey. Uh, there is sadly there's no Superman Daily. But, the only... when it, but I, I know there's not a Superman Daily, but the comic books. Oh, yeah, I loved them. Serious business. Oh, don't f with me. <laughs> <laughs> Superman, Batman, Spider Man. <laughs> Serious. Hello. I know. Hello. Listen, what's your name? You want a prize? Matt. Matt, where are you from? Green Bay, Wisconsin. Matt, yeah, hey there. Go Packers. Hey, Matt, <laughs> okay. Matt, Matt, you've won an Apple iPod. Awesome. $10 gift certificate to the iTunes Music Store with over half a million songs. Go back, go! Uh, at the iTunes Music Store, now it's time to update your music collection. Windows and Mac users, uh, download a free copy of iTunes today at iTunes.com. Enjoy your iPod, my friend. Thanks for listening to the show. Thanks a lot. In Green Bay, uh, that's WNFL, right? That's right. Right on. Thank you. Hold on a, a second. Ah, mystery guest. Scared kids? Scary. Mystery guest. We come right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Me? That's why the bosses sent me out here. They wanted me to make sure none of the other crews robbed the joint. Like these two f***ing balloon heads over here. They were going to try to bang us out of 200 grand? Yeah, right, I'm sure. The Don and Mike Show. Happily cruising aboard the rudderless ship, Don and Mike. Yeah, yeah, now, uh, stand by you animals. We'll have a uh, $100 prize and a uh, digital camera to give away, uh... In a couple of seconds here. I think we're going to start with the mystery guest, uh, just with Mike and and Buzz playing. All right, I'm ready. I got my thinking cap on. No cheating. Mystery I'm not going to cheat. I haven't looked at anything. Nobody's giving me any uh, intel. Mystery guest is on the line? Yep. Okay. Um, and I, I'd say a total of mm, 15 questions. Each? No. One of you gets eight, one of you gets seven. All right. You want eight or seven, Mike? I want eight. I want eight. <laughs> I'm sorry, Buzz, That's but fine. I'm greedy that no, way. You're dwarf. What is that? Dumb, what did six eight six seven eight nine? There's some. Isn't there some dumb kids joke? About the only thing I know is this is an A B conversation. See your way out of it. <laughs> Why was six scared of seven? <laughs> hold, hold on, Robbie. Why? Why was six scared of seven? Why? Because seven eight nine. Hey. That's <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> with that big cranium filled with. There you go. So the mystery guest is on the phone. Uh, say hello, mystery guest. Oh, hello, hello. Of course. Ah, thank you. Right, well, Fantastic. We've, we've established that the mystery guest is a male. Mike, first question for you. Mystery guest, uh, did your fame come in television or film? Oh, uh, television. The telly, of course. The telly. Buzz, mm -hmm. number two. Uh, was it a comedy or a drama? Uh, sometimes it was both. Mike, number three. Mystery guest, are you over 50? Oh, certainly. Buzz, number four. Uh, was it a cop show? Uh, of a sort, yes. Hmm. Mike, number five. Mystery guest, was it Barney Miller? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Buzz, number six. Stab in the dark. Mm. Uh, was, it a, uh, was it a western? Uh, you might say of a sort, yes. But, uh, but now I'm confused. Comedy, drama, western, mm -hmm. cop yes. show. Mike, number seven. Black and white mystery guest or color? Uh, color. Buzz, number eight. Um, yeah, was it a was it a one hour show? No. Okay. Uh, Mike, number nine. Mystery guest. Uh, were you a romantic lead? Oh yes. <laughs> hmm. Buzz number ten. I, I think I have a guess. Can I can I do that? Or if you want to turn on? all the cards over, go ahead. Okay. Is this Dennis Weaver? The voice. Yeah. Dennis Weaver. Way to go, Buzz. McLeod. McLeod. I recognize his voice. It's Mc... McLeod. Well, there was a drama all the way. McLeod, no. There was, no, there yeah, was humor. It's comedy. Right. And I didn't know. I thought maybe you were talking about Gunsmoke, and that was comedy. Yeah, yeah. Gunsmoke was comedy. Some. McLeod. And, of course, Dennis Weaver, I, I know, as famous for that uh, that house that's made out of recycled materials, right? Yeah, it's my earth ship, yes. Do you still ah. live in that thing? Oh, absolutely, sure. Very cool. Excellent. I want to tell you that for the longest time when I was a kid, uh, when that the NBC mystery movie would come on, 
And you had your rotation. You had one that was really bad, and then you had Colombo and you had McLeod. McLeod was always and, solid. And I guess mm. it's what St. James, what's her name? Was it Street? Oh, you're talking about McMillan uh, and White. And White. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yours was always a good one. And what I loved most about it was the guy, the New York cop that was your boss, that always had the half the cigar in his mouth would go, McLeod? <laughs> Get me McLeod. McLeod! <laughs> That's like one of Don's favorite impressions. Yeah. Who was the actor that played that guy? Uh, who was the actor that played that guy? <laughs> J.D. Cannon. What was his name? J.D. Cannon. J.D. Cannon. Uh, McLeod? Here, here's how the scene would go. The guy's in a busy New York police station, mid-70s. He, he, he picks up the phone. Yeah, police. What? There's a man on a horse driving through Midtown? McLeod! <laughs> <laughs> it was it was great. So, uh, 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 Dennis, let me uh, ask you, sir. Uh, you you uh, were a very famous, still are a famous performer. Going to be in this uh, uh, Disney movie, right? The uh, yeah. Uh, so, home on the range. And as Mike mentioned, you're famous for having lived in this house made of garbage. You're probably one of the more prominent uh, environmentalists. Uh, that you know, you you've been. Uh, chomping at this for a long time, haven't you? Oh, well, yeah, but I'm also an economist. I put those two together, and I come up with an, uh, I'm an economist. Well, that's tough <laughs> to say, I, Dennis. I, I care about the ecology and the economy both. we got to have both of them. You can go to uh, Dennis's, uh, here's a website. There's like a million plugs here, but it's www.econolomics, E C O. L O N O M I C S dot org. Economics. Economics. That is the that is the website for uh, for Dennis Weaver. Now, well, a, a more si a simpler website is drivehydrogen dot com. Drive hydrogen. Now, do you drive around in a hydrogen car? Uh, we are going to on the June the twenty eighth. We're going. Uh, we've got the international hydrogen drive going from Mexico to Canada, close to California, Washington, and Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> Who's nuttier? Do you think you or Ed Begley? Not here. Well, I mean that in the sense that, that in a I nice always, way. I, oh yeah, in a nice way. Concerned about the environment. Ed Begley is always one of those guys, and I think he's doing it now simply because what, what else has he got? You never know. I mean, I'll give this to you, Dennis. You lived in the house made of garbage way before anybody else got in this, into this whole ecology thing. Mm -hmm. So who's nuttier, you or Ed Begley? Ed Begley Jr. has to be nuttier, well, I right? I think we're one of the two wisest people on earth. There you go. That's right. That's See, the spirit. We yeah. understand if we're going to have a sustainable future, we've got to have both a sustainable environment and a sustainable economy. They're both absolutely essential, guys. Were you shocked, Dennis? Were you shocked by Janice Jack Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl? What'd she do? You didn't. <laughs> You're playing a game with us, aren't you? What would you... I was. I, I'm not shocked at anything that's on television these there days. Are you go. kidding? Right. There you go. That's my guy, Dennis. Let me ask you something. Not that it has anything to do with what you're talking about, but really, shouldn't government just get out of the way of broadcasters? Shouldn't people just be allowed to decide what it is they want to come into their homes? Well, they should get out of our lives. Yeah, and more and more. Yes, a amen, and and more specifically, you know what's interesting get out of our bedroom, particularly. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting is that, that don't you think now though that uh, you know with all of this with this climate uh, as far as broadcasters with them wanting to clamp down on us at the same time they want the companies that are you know doing the things you hate polluting the uh, environment to kind of say what the hell. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know they they are lifting the restrictions on a lot of things that are really bad for our children and. Uh, you know, that we, we, we got to clean up the way we live. I mean, it's uh, ridiculous. How many tires are in your house? I know your house uh, tires? Like, yeah. I know your house is like 3,000. 3,000? Does 3, your house, because your house is made of recycled goods, does your house smell like, I, I, don't be offended, like a dump? I, I mean. Uh, no, of course not. Uh, uh, every tire is covered. You know, we, we pound the, the dirt into the tires and use them like you would bricks, and then we cover the. We use all those tires to cover to build the walls of the house, and then we cover the walls with adobe. It has that southwest beautiful uh, Santa Fe look to it. What else is recycled? I mean, for for those people that might not know, I mean, you are famous for this house that you built out of recycled materials. Besides the tires, what did you use to build your house? Well, we used a lot of uh, conventional material, but we also used uh, let me see, three hundred thousand cans. <laughs> what did you use the cans for? 
the little walls. You use them like bricks. They they're perfect. Perfect. You, uh, no, no, so what? You you put stuff in the in the can? No, oh, no, no. You just you just the empty can. You just use them like you would a brick with mortar, and then you cover that wall with uh, with adobe. It, so, it, so you wouldn't be able to see, for instance, if your wall was made out of Pabst Blue Ribbon or Coca-Cola. No. Because there's something uh, something on, on the front of that. Well, we left a little space in my wife's office where it's a billboard. You think it's a, a little uh, uh, thing, you know, and, and it opens up. And when you open it up, you see Budweiser and Pepsi-Cola. And there you go. And were the, were, the cans, uh, were the cans hollow that you used to yeah. build? Yeah. That's huh. the guy. And then used Adobe over That's them. good insulation. Right. So if you don't mind asking this question, how much on the open market do you think your house would be worth right now? Because I'm sure, I'm sure you have to have, like, uh, indoor plumbing, right? You have a bathroom. Well, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We've, we've got about uh, 20, a little over 20 acres. We've got a mountain stream running through our property. We've got uh, a pond. We've got a barn. And we've got a guest house made out of logs. A little guest house, so uh, uh, so it's talking also, about the property. So if you were if you were to drive by, you'd say that's a nice house. You wouldn't say, hey, look at that house that's made out of cans and, and tires. No, right. no, you, you, we have tourists coming by our house all the time. It's a uh, it's on the tourist site scene. <laughs> really? yeah. Are there many other people that followed oh. your lead and uh, and built a house out of go recycled to, product? Go to loser dot com. <laughs> Type of construction? Yeah, there's about uh, we we would estimate about five thousand in uh, in America. You'd like to but they're all over the all over the world in Portugal, South America, Mount Everest. They're they're every place. And do people stop you now and and say, "Hey, McLeod, do you still get that?" It's definitely McLeod. McLeod. Because McLeod. Because McLeod was from uh, New Mexico, I believe. Yeah, Taos, New Mexico. T-A-O-S, New Mexico. And he got sent all out of his crazy environment to New York where he would ride his horse up and down like uh, Fifth Avenue. you still wear a cowboy hat when you're walking around? No. <laughs> I guess you can't do that anymore, can no. you? And but you see, I was one of the first environmentalists in New York as McLeod. I didn't want to pollute the air with... Uh, Fossil fuels, you know. So you rode your, so your horse. horse. <laughs> and it's, what would, let me just, before we get to the sex quiz part of this, uh, I know there's probably a large amount of our audience, uh, a large percentage, wondering uh, this. And I'll, I'll say it. Why do you care so much about ecology when, you know, you're going to be dead, I'm going to be dead, everything's fine while we're here. Why do you care about it? Good question. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lousy attitude. Just say I'm going to be dead and then leave all the problems to our kids and our grandchildren. Yeah, well, hey, listen, what, what else is there in it to be a parent for? <laughs> I mean, you've got to have something to look at. Then, um, I'm kidding. Partly kidding. Uh, <laughs> but really, who cares about, about garbage? I mean, there, are, there, will, there, there will always be garbage. Well, uh, you know, I think that fortunately there's a there's a vast amount of people out there that don't have the same attitude you do. That's that's just uh, fortunate for us because no, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to breathe clean air, if you want to drink pure water, if you want to live in a I don't. You don't. <laughs> I don't. Well, fortunately, you're in the minority. <laughs> yes. As long as he has cable television, he's okay. That's yeah, the way it works, basically. I, I'm fine drinking swill. Now, if you want to make the case, Dennis, for Don, what you want to do is you want to tell him that in the event that the environment goes to hell, he, eventually the, uh, the, the the ozone layer will be will be so shot that he won't be able to receive satellite television. It won't happen in my lifetime, though. <laughs> you never know. So why should I worry <laughs> you about it? You never know. And if it happens... That's when I take my life. <laughs> that's when you take your own life. The, wow. day, the day there's no television. Fantastic. And I told you, that's the biggest way to piss off God. Really? Really. Is to, well, you know, I, I thought it's... That's right. Suicide. Take your own life. Yeah. Suicide's of course. the biggest way. So, Dennis, how do you like the show? Which one? The, the one you're on. Oh, oh, okay. It's okay, I guess. Where, you, where is it broadcast from? We originate in our nation's capital. But we, we're a, a semi... Well, now, how do I say this right? We are regionally coast-to-coast -coast, syndicated nationally. Okay. And now Dennis Weaver, star of McLeod, and also a very, uh, very concerned about the environment. And the economy. Don't forget the economy. That's right. Another, you know, if you lost your job, another, uh, you yeah. have a different attitude. And Deanna, yeah, we almost my, did, actually. My friend, can I tell you something, Dennis, you don't know. Just last week, both Mike and I were suspended without pay. We were almost fired. And I'll tell you something, during that time... I still threw garbage out my window of the car. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Just because I'm lazy. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Watch out. He's going to get one of those old six shooters out. He's going to shoot you. <laughs> I think he knows I'm kidding. I think. You know he's kidding, right, Dennis? I don't know. I had yeah. never met him until today. Yeah. Yeah. See, will you calm Mr. Weaver down and tell him you're just joking? I you only... do occasionally. In fact, you don't do that anymore. No, I, because I, I got busted by my neighbors and my family for tossing. For throwing garbage and for littering. Mm-hmm. For throwing the diet, uh, cherry coke, diet vanilla coke cans out, right. of the, uh, That's right. out the car window. Would you ever drive a hyd- hydrogen car? Are you talking if, to me? If it had a, I, I was actually talking to my radio partner. If it had a, a bitchin' radio. <laughs> if it had a good radio. If it had some nice 26-inch rims. How far were those How were those uh, hydrogen cars work, Dennis? Will they travel far or what? They'll travel, absolutely. They'll, they'll travel just like a conventional car. They'll have the same kind of power, the same kind of... Dennis? Uh, at, uh, attru- what's the word? There's your radio, uh, GPS, whatever you want in your car. You and they'll, they'll get like gas. You, you go to a, like a hydrogen place and fill them up and then uh, sure, just like gas? Like yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I recently, Dennis, uh, I don't want to give a, any kind of a plug here because I paid for the product, but I'll tell you, I drive what I consider to be a pretty economical vehicle. <laughs> and I recently had the opportunity to drive uh, all the way down to Florida. And I'm telling you, for portions of I-95, in my uh, 2002 Cadillac Escalade, <laughs> I got an instant fuel mileage, uh, occasionally as low as seven miles an hour. Oh, God. <laughs> well, it's got that thing that says you press yeah. the button yeah. for the instant fuel economy. That's a, you really feel like you're economizing then, don't you? Well, I'm, you know, I'm seven away from zero. What are you driving around in now, Dennis? Well, I drive the Prius. Mm-hmm. 2004. It's a beautiful car. Just really a sweet driving car. Now, is the Prius the half electric, half gas? Is that yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, and I'm getting 50 miles a gallon. Wow. Yeah, but how are your rims on that thing? <laughs> <laughs> you know They're what I mean? I mean you They're just, beautiful. You, you mean you want to use have spinners on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you buy one of those hybrid cars, they let you use the carpool in. There you go. Oh, do they really? Yeah. Really? Yep. Uh, right. Dennis, you mean HOV if you got a Prius? That's right. Right. Uh, really? All right. Dennis, here's the deal. We want to thank you for being on our show. Uh, it, all, ser- all seriousness aside, uh, <laughs> we, we do we do love um, McLeod. McLeod. And gun smoke. <laughs> and, and, and gun smoke. Uh, and have you, did you uh, answer the question about taking our sex quiz? Did you agree to at least listen to it? Oh, yeah, I'll listen to it. Okay, very good. Being a big TV star. And just before he gives you the sex quiz, Dennis, one, one quick, how, how many square feet is your house? You're the one that, that's made out of recycled. 20,000. 9,500. Oh, wow. 9,500? I thought I heard 20,000. 20,000. 20,000. No. Well, with the acreage, how 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 much? What do you mean? How many what? acres on the land did you 20 say? Acres, yeah. 20, 20, that's 20 acres. 20 acres. 20 acres. Right. 20 acres. <laughs> Boy, let me see. With my fuel economy, on one tank of gas, you I... could actually make it from uh, from the from his door down to the end of his driveway with your fuel economy. But Dennis, it doesn't bother me because I won't be around here to worry about it. What about your son? I got it. I think my son is 18. I think we'll be okay until my son's life is over. And what about your your grandchildren? <laughs> yeah, now I shrug my I shoulders. I got you there, don't I? Huh? I shrug my shoulders. Why can I? By that time, George Bush will have us on the moon, Mike. <laughs> Oh, we'll be on Mars. Are you kidding? <laughs> He's going to put us on Mars. That's right. No, he wants to go back to the moon that, first. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. That's productive. My man. <laughs> hey, hey, you don't have to slam him. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Slamming? Who was slamming? I'm ready to switch to the other side. There Sim- you go. Simply point. based on the fact that I think that more Democrats mm-hmm. will vote against the censorship stuff than the Republicans. Incidentally, will. that's a very good sign too, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I like... yeah, I, I'm glad you recognize we're losing our freedom. Yes, yes. amen. Uh, tell me about it, sir. I almost got fired driving my gas guzzling SUV last week. <laughs> uh, Dennis, yeah, have you, there are uh, 13 questions, sir. Okay. Have you ever been in a three-way or enjoyed group sex? Group sex? Yes. Yeah. No. No. That that answer is no. Have you ever had a sex with a woman while she's menstruating? No. No. Have you ever had a homosexual experience? No. No. Really? Not even on the cloud? (laughs) (laughs) Dennis Weaver, have you ever made love in your parents' home? I'm trying to think. No, I don't think. Well, no. No? No? Okay. Uh, Dennis, have you ever enjoyed hot interracial love? Hot interracial love. Yeah. Uh, 
Listen, I've been married for 58 years. No. 58 oh. years? Well, yeah. Congratulations. Wow. <clears throat> Dennis, have you ever J.O.'d in front of others? <laughs> <laughs> Not hardly. Uh, Not hardly. <laughs> Great answer. Have you ever had sex in a public place? Sex in a public place? Yes. Well, who would do that? I mean, that's a yes for him. No, that'd be a no, I think. That'd be a no. <laughs> a no. <laughs> who would do that? Was the you know. Well, then I have no, no problems asking you the next question. Mm -hmm. Dennis, have you ever had sex in the no-no? In the no-no? You know where food comes out. <laughs> Or food? Oh, oh, God. I had to take a moment to try and figure that out. Yeah. No, no. No. Good right. for you. Good for you. That's Dad. right. That's the right answer. Um, have you jailed today? <laughs> no. 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 Have you? No. Only three more questions, Dennis. Have you ever had sex in a car? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. The string is broken. But don't, never... try it, don't try it in a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever had a one-night stand or sex with a stranger? Uh, about 59 years ago. There yeah. you go. Okay. And the final question to the nearest 10, 50, 100, or 1,000, what do you, Dennis Weaver, TB's McLeod, estimate your total number of partners to have been? Sexual partners. Sexual partners? Yeah. Uh, I've only been married once. So that would be one? That would be one. One? Wow. So is that the stranger? Hmm? Was she the stranger? No, no. no. I said 59 years ago. Yeah, okay. Right. But... Oh, that's why she was a stranger 59 years ago. <laughs> so you mean the only woman you've ever had sex with is your wife? Uh... <laughs> no, there was... I say I say 59 years ago, I, I actually had sex with another woman. So, so there would be two then. So you yeah. had sex with two women. Well, let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Buzz, how did he do? Had you scored, uh, Dennis Weaver? How did he do? I, our I dubbed the St. McLeod. Uh, our best score ever with two yes answers and two partners. That's the, uh, that would be the purest the driven snow. St. McLeod. You are St. McLeod. You're, you're, it's fantastic. McLeod! <laughs> you have the purest score ever on the sex quiz, and we've given this for, uh, to everybody from presidential candidates to uh, Dennis Franz from NYPD Blue. Well, Dennis, thank you for your time. Well, you're welcome. Until next time, don't forget <laughs> in our current time. Don't forget, drivehydrogen.com. Drivehydrogen.com. Right. In all, all right. honesty, sir, really, you'd love our show because all we do is just recycle the same stuff every day. <laughs> <laughs> we, never, we never come up with new material. Never at all. It's just constantly recycled. It's the same right. stuff. Uh, nice having you on, Dennis. All right. Thank you. Thank nice you, Dennis you. Weaver. Thank nice you. chatting thank with you. you. Here's the mystery celebrity, Dennis Weaver. How old would he be? A hundred. Check it out. He's pretty old. I mean, he's a... I mean, I watched, Mary, Mary, I watched what, him when, when I was a small child. Fifty-eight so. years. Yeah. Oh, it was watched him when he was Yeah, see, this is my point. I'm going to get... If you want to do the over-under, I'd say the over... The over would be 75. Right. And the under would be... I think... I think 65. Got to be 78 if he's been married 58 years. At least. All right, yeah, so, so the over is... I mean, well, you know, I if he got married... over-under would be 78. 70... Then I'm going to say... Over. See, I think he, yeah, I think probably twenty five. I'd say over. over. I'll, I'll go under because it's more fun. Mm -hmm. All right, Buzz. Here's the best part of playing any game. Yes. Do you have the answer? I do. Oh, and he's eighty. Eighty. Over. We're winners. We're winners. We we win. Damn it. We win. <laughs> and the first sign during that interview that you might be coming over to the good side again. Oh no, I, I'm there. Oh really? Uh, when I was watching the rock and roll, the congressional hearings. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm on the Democratic side again. Thank you. Although there's a lot of Democrats that were speaking out mm -hmm. against broadcasters. And you yes, guys, were. you should have your Democrat badges taken away from you. <laughs> they you, should. you really should, mm -hmm. for God's sakes. It's the first goddamn amendment. Mm -hmm. Please don't make me repeat that. Well, we'll I'll be, uh, fill your mailbox with buttons and stickers. We'll be uh, right back. Oh, we'll give away money <laughs> on a prize when we come right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Ed Rooney's office. This is George Peterson. Oh, uh, please hold. Ed Rooney. Ed, this is George Peterson. How are you today, sir? Well, we've had a bit of bad luck this morning, as you may have heard. Yeah, I heard, and oh, I'm all broken up. Boy, what a blow. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's been a tough morning, and uh, we've got a lot of family business to take care of, so if you wouldn't mind excusing Sloan... 
I'd uh, appreciate it. Uh, uh, sure. Yo, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, you uh, you you just produce a corpse, and uh, I'll release Sloan. Did, did you say you wanted to see a body? You don't like my policies. You can just come on down here and smooch my big old white butt. Pucker up, Buttercup. What? There's viewers online too. Um. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, no, I, I I think I owe you an apology, sir. Well, I should say you do. I, uh... Well, I think you should be sorry, for Christ's sake. A family member dies, and you insult me. What the hell is the matter with you, anyway? Yeah, I, I, I really don't know, sir. I mean, I, I, I didn't think I was talking to you. I, I thought I was talking to somebody else. You know, sir, that I would never deliberately insult you like that. I, I, just, I can't begin to tell you how embarrassed I am. What? Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. What? Oh, uh, you're yeah, absolutely right, sir. You've hit the nail right in the head. This isn't over yet, Buster. Do you read me? Uh, loud and clear, Mr. Peterson. <laughs> Call me, sir. God damn it. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. The Don and Mike Show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Hey, what happened? They're not here to make fun, not here to replace us. They just want to bring back some memories. Don and Mike. Oh, you should have seen me with a Hey, listen, uh, t today's show's good. Uh, tomorrow, Mike O'Mara will be singing the Canadian National Anthem uh, for the entire opening segment outside. Because Adam Sandler's not a Canadian. Also tomorrow, uh, Joe Ardinger and his uh, movie reviews. Uh, d d not a review, actually. Joe will present a 1960s educational film. You Joe will host. You didn't say anything when I was mentioning that you'll be singing O Canada tomorrow for the entire first break. Well, what do you want me to say? Outside. <laughs> Yippee. Uh, huh? Yippee. Huzzah. Yippee. Huzzah. I will tell you that um, I will... Uh, I will pursue my task with uh, with a great deal of good humor and uh, enthusiasm. Frankly, all you know is, is all I've known, and all you've known is, is all what I've told you. Told you. Uh, and tomorrow, Joe's movie is on narcotics. And uh, if you missed the uh, early, she's gonna kill you. It was on the uh, treadmill. Welcome home. We, we still never have gotten to uh, Roger Ebert and his stroke. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, we got called the DJ George McFly back. Oh, man. That other DJ, uh, Danny Ocean, the guy that we were going to help find a job. And we technically, we still have the telethon tapes. Oh, shut up. <laughs> we do. Just, God. just get out of here. Uh, a lot of that, uh, we, there's stuff we have to get to that we've not got to. We'll get to it tomorrow. But, but now, it's time to give away some money and a prize. And everybody, uh, get out a pencil and paper. Yeah, you know this game. If you are a new listener to the show, uh, here here's how it works. If you are, I, let me just say welcome. We, uh, <laughs> you know, the false sincerity. Yeah. <laughs> the false sincerity. Yes. What about it? It's having an effect on me. <laughs> it, Is it now? I'm sorry. It's it, it's, it's bringing out <laughs> the, the anger the you. in me. It's bringing out the and I know it's phony sincerity. Yeah. But it's bringing out the phony vulgarity and anger <laughs> in me. Is it now? It is. It, I'm sorry. Is that upsetting you? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, <F> a. <laughs> uh, well, let me be the first to say I'll back off of that then. <laughs> Okay. Uh, no effing problem. <laughs> no effing okay. problem. Maybe we should stop this. No, now listen. See, this is the thing that we can't. We we can. Yes. Still say initials. For oh, of words. course we can. We can. I know we can. <laughs> you doing? You're doing the mfing fake, <laughs> fake funny. Yeah. Fake happy. But no, fake no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Fake sincerity. And I'd say the word I'm if just, I could. I'm just trying to find my way. It's BS. <laughs> just trying to find my way. It's BS. Yes, sir, it is. I'd love to say that. I know you would. I can't say I that. I know. You're troublemaker, you. I am. Watch you, out. And you. But now you're like, you're like, who's the, 
I'm the witch that ended up under the house, <laughs> and you're the witch that, that, that Rick Dees' wife does the impression of. Linda's Linda. A good witch. <laughs> the good witch. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? <laughs> there you go. Meanwhile, I'm underneath the house <laughs> with your feet curling up. You just see my red feet. With your striped socks. <laughs> Such a wonderful film that was. <laughs> 1939. <laughs> you're saying the word BS with a house on top of me. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But technically, you would know that I was under that house with you. I know you would. Yes, yeah, all right. I, Enough of this. I'm done. I'm done with this crap. All right. done. All right. Um, Mike, yes. here, here's how we play the game. Buzz, everybody mm-hmm. listening. Uh, it's can you get to ten. We're going to come up with ten lies, one more unbelievable than, than the previous. And if you call your mom or your dad up, you tell them you're on a radio show, you're doing a true confessions thing, whatever. If, if you can get your parents to believe everything you're telling them, or at least not to say something along the lines of, this is impossible. You're but, lying. What are you doing? You know, you're crazy. Anything like that, you're in trouble. And we do have a nationally uh, syndicated regional coast-to-coast show. So there are many different scenarios you could use to set up Can You Get to Ten. Right. For instance, you could say that you went down to Florida to go to the Daytona 500. Mm-hmm. You could say that you went to New Orleans to go to Mardi Gras. Right. Or if, it's, if you can't be that exotic, you could say, I was downtown today. At the hotel, at the at the Hyatt Hotel, whatever. I had to run downtown to run an errand, and you'll never guess who I bumped into. That's right. how it starts. Now we always ha- come up with a list of celebrities. Uh, Dennis Weaver, I've got him on the list. Oh, good. Uh, also, I think uh, topical and timely from Sex in the City would be the Dave Foley girl, Cynthia Nixon. <laughs> and the only other name that I've written down thus far is Jim Nance. From from CBS. Wow, that's a good combination. But we need at least one or two more. This well, it was we... mentioned earlier in the show. Might I offer rapper 50 Cent? Oh, that's great. Because I just like the idea of 50 Cent and Dennis Weaver in the same room. <laughs> and we need, we need one more celeb. We need one more. Now, I've, I've looked in the newspaper. There are, there are pl- there's plenty of hot ones. I, I, and I don't mean hot looking. Um, you mean like popular. <laughs> how, old is, how old is Malcolm? I know we're doing this Malcolm in the Middle thing. How Frankie old is he? Munoz? Yeah, how old is he? He's probably like 18, right? Let's 17 at least because he's driving. Uh, it's kind of borderline. You know, again, welcome to the new world in which we live in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frankie Munoz may be too young. Too young, so we need somebody just a, just a little bit older but that would fall into that category. Um, oh, I know. Who's that dick that was on Saved by the Bell who's, who was on the New Year's Eve show with Dick Clark? Rob, you know this guy's name, and I know you hate him. Mario Lopez. Oh, I hate him. Isn't he great? Yeah, he played AC That's Splitter. perfect. Mario Lopez. That's right. So, wonderful dimple. He does that, that animal show, too. Yeah. It's no, it's TV a game on. show on Animal Planet. Animal Planet, right. Seen it. Uh, so, your celebrities that you'll be having sex with are <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Weaver, <laughs> Cynthia Nixon, Jim Nance, 50 Cent, and Mario Lopez. Right, right. Mario Lopez. So what we're going to do now is we all physically, our hands have pieces of paper, index cards, Mm -hmm. and, you know, writing utensils. Mm -hmm. And we're going to write ten lies, and it's very important that you guys keep track of the story because you're going to have to tell your parents the very same set of lies. Uh, and if you do that, incidentally, you get a hundred dollars in cash and the digital camera, courtesy of Malcolm in the Middle. That's a good prize. Watch the hundred dollar episode of Malcolm this uh, Sunday, nine Eastern, eight Central, on, only on Fox. So, first line: Hey, mom and dad, I was at the Daytona 500. You know, again, if that doesn't work, give me you, anything else for you. Anything else? Where we need I was to at be. the da- Daytona 500. You're not going to believe it. I'm coming out of the out of the the grandstand, out of the track area. And the first guy, I, if, the guy that I see is this famous TV sports guy, Jim Nance. <laughs> and I start talking to him about how outraged I was by the Super Bowl behavior. And he said, really, I didn't find myself to be that outraged. Mm. And I was surprised by that. Hold on, that's too long. Uh, you see Jim Nance. You start talking to him about the Super Bowl. Then he says, I got to run. And you say, where are you going? I mean, how do we always do this thing with the All right, you, you bump into the guy, and then, uh, then, he say, then he says he gives him a lift, or, or, or Jim Nance is going somewhere, he gives him a lift. But the line number one is usually you're at the place, and you run into the first celebrity, and the first celebrity says he's going somewhere. 
at Jim Nance, and he says, I'm going to an after-race party. Okay. Hmm, there you so go. that's... Uh, it works for Daytona 500, works at Mardi Gras. I'm going to an after party. There you go. No matter what you're doing, you're going to an after party, and Jim Nance has, has just invited you. Okay. After you struck up a conversation with well, him. He doesn't have to him. invite you. Doesn't have to, you're going to invite yourself. So forget the Super Bowl stuff. You just run into Jim Nance. You run him into Daytona 500. Or you could, you could throw that and say, hey, Randy, we talked about the Janet Jackson stuff. There it turns go. out he's going to a, a post party. And and now... All right, line number two. Line number two. Line number two. Uh, Mom and Dad, I, I was so gutsy... I invited myself to Jim Nance's party, and he said I could come along. Okay. Now, that's all we need to get rolling. So they, they said they could bring me along. Line number one is I'm at the Daytona 500 or wherever. Mm -hmm. I ran into this TV sports guy, Jim Nance. Uh, he says he's going to a, a post-race party. Mm -hmm. And he said, come along. You can even ride in my limo. Okay, that's number two. Right. All right, so I invite myself. He says, come along. You can even ride in my limo. You're such a nice person. Line number three. He says, on our way to the party, we have to stop and get a couple of my friends. Don't you want somebody to wait in the limo? Don't you want somebody to be in the limo when they get Already? in? Already, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. Okay. But yeah, but <laughs> just, just, but, we're going with tradition. Yeah. All right, but I'm going to... Uh, pick anybody to be in. Uh, no, no, no I'm, I'm just thinking, who, who don't want to be sick? Uh, <laughs> well, I think Nixon should be in the limo. I want to save her. I want to. I, I want to save her. <laughs> I want to save her coming in later. I want her to be in bad shape. I just wanted her to be in the limo with Nan. She's gonna do something to him later. Okay, very good. <laughs> how about how about in? I get in the limo, and smelling of of alcohol mm -hmm. with his shirt off is Mario Lopez. There you go. Okay. So you're in the limo. The first thing you say is this guy from Saved by the Bell. He's got no shirt on. He smells of booze. It's Mario Lopez. And and he, the only thing that we can understand that he's saying is, we're Cynthia. Okay. Okay? In limo, stinky Mario Lopez wears Cynthia. Okay. Wears. See, we're really writing this down. Mm-hmm. H-I-A. That's line number three. Mike, number four. On the way to the party. <laughs> <laughs> it's more ridiculous this time. <laughs> we have to stop and pick up TV's McLeod, Dennis Weaver. <laughs> He's got to be there somehow. That's the only way I can figure to work him in. Mm -hmm. On the way to the party, we have to stop and pick up Dennis Weaver, TV's McLeod, and you have to say it that way on this particular TV's line. McLeod. On the way to the party, we have to stop and pick up Dennis Weaver, TV's McLeod. <laughs> That's line number four. So line, line, line number five is, you're not going to believe this, Mom. I'm in the I'm in the limo with all of these uh, all of these guy. Hold on, Mario said we're Cynthia. Right. Mm -hmm. We stopped and picked up uh, TV's McLeod. Mm -hmm. uh, line number oh. line number line number five. Mm -hmm. McLeod, uh, what, Weaver. Weaver. Weaver said hey, Weaver. Nixon <laughs> was at 50 cents. <laughs> Weaver says Nixon is at 50 cents. Because remember Mario <laughs> wondering where Cynthia Nixon. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five. Number six. Mike. Okay. Because we have thus far, I'm at the Daytona 500. Mm -hmm. uh, TV's Jim Nance uh, says, I start talking to him about the Super Bowl. He says he's going to a, a post race party. Line number two, you're not going to believe this, Mom and Dad. I was so crazy. I was just full of myself. I was boozed up. I was gutsy. I, I invited myself to the party. He, he said, uh, sure, you can come along. He asked me to get in his limo. Line number three, inside the limo, I get in the limo, and there's. This guy's got no shirt on. He smells of booze. Mm -hmm. He's Mario Lopez, this guy from Saved by the Bell. And he's just saying over and over, he's drunk, but he's saying over and over again, where's Cynthia Nixon? Right. Line number four. Mom, for some reason, the limo stops, and we pick up Dennis Weaver. TV's McLeod. Line number five. <laughs> Dennis McLeod gets into the car. Dennis Here, Weaver. Uh, De I'm sorry. Dennis Weaver gets into the car. Here's Mario Lopez, and he says, oh, I know where Cynthia Nixon is. He said 50 cents. Rapper, 50 cents. Rapper, 50 cents. <laughs> so, that's one, two, three, four. 
That's pretty good. We got everybody in the car now. We're only yeah. up to line number five. Number six, Mike. We get to the hotel where the party is, and Jim Nance tells me the party is in Fifty Cent's room, where Cynthia Nixon's waiting for us. Okay. Now. We get to the hotel where the party is, and Jim Nance tells me the party is in Fifty Cent's room with with Cynthia Nixon. It would be better if it was Cynthia Nixon's room. Where, where rapper Fifty Cent will be performing? <laughs> can we do that? Is that possible? Yeah, sure, we can. Okay, Weaver says because all the line number five is basically is we Weaver says Nixon is at Fifty Cent. All right, so then, or, or, or we can say uh, no, no, that, that's fine because then we go to the hotel. Or we say Nixon and Weaver says Nixon is with Fifty Cent. There you go. That's it. He is with Fifty yeah, Cent. That's the only change. Okay, so we get to the hotel where the party is. Is line number six, and Jim Nance tells me. The party is in Cynthia Nixon's room, mm -hmm. and rapper 50 Cent is performing. 50 Cent. Buzz, are you writing this down? I absolutely am. Okay, good, because then I won't write it down. It'll be much faster if Buzz just reads it back to us. Okay. And then maybe you can photocopy us copies. Of no, this you won't be able to read yeah. this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, number seven. Uh -huh. Mom, Dad, you're not going to believe this. We get to the hotel room. And they're, they're virtually naked. I don't want to say these people are naked. Nixon and, and Scent? Nixon, Nixon and Scent. And as I'm meeting them, Cynthia Nixon throws up all over me. Okay? And they, it's obvious that they've, just, or they've come out of the hot tub or the shower or whatever. They have on towels. They've been drinking. I'm getting introduced to people. And the next thing you know, this lovely girl from Sex in the City throws up all over me. So Nixon vomits. That's number eight. One, two, three, that was number four, seven. five, six, seven. seven. Oh, okay. Vomits. Mike, number eight. Okay. Fifty Cent says, "Yo, man, <laughs> get her into the tub." <laughs> and Dennis Weaver, Mario Lopez, Jim Nance, and I carry Cynthia Nixon into the bathroom. Number nine. Fifty Cent says, yo, man, get her into the tub. And Dennis Weaver, Mario Lopez, Jim Nance, and I carry Cynthia Nixon into the bathroom. I've just been told that they will delete that out of the show. All right. Uh, why would that be? She could just vomit, I guess, right? It wouldn't have to be on somebody. Yes. So the lie has now changed. Cynthia Nixon is simply vomiting. Okay. And 50 cents says, uh, get her into the tub, clean her up, and we carry her to the bathroom. So, Mom, we get we get to the bathtub, and, uh, well, before you know it, we're scrubbing the vomit off Cynthia Nixon, and, and, and I'm covered, and, and as it turns out, i got to take my clothes off, and one thing leads to another, and... You're at nine, you know. That, that's nine. So nine is. Anyway, so we, we scrub her and we get all we go, we get so we get we, we scrub her we get soaking wet. We all have to take off our clothes. Yeah, yeah. We scrub her and and our collar because our collar also has a, the, right, right. the you know the belt on the, the you know. The, well, or, yeah, but we just, can't do that. There, let's say you're just your clothes are soaked from cleaning her up. Right. So all then right. you have to take off your clothes. All right. So you got to scrub down Nixon in the tub. Yeah, we scrub her. We get we all get soaking wet, mm -hmm. so wet we have to take our clothes off. There and you then go. mom and dad, this is the part you're not going to believe. It's at that point in the tub that myself. Dennis Weaver, Mario Lopez, Cynthia Nixon, Jim Nance, and 50 Cent had glorious six-way sex. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. And you got to know that you got to say that part absolutely verbatim. That you had glorious six-way sex. Right. Now, for a recap of this, Buzz has actually been over there on, with the word processor. Scribbling furiously. Let's go to Buzz to see if you actually have the, if you were able to decipher this. Okay, here, here's the lie. Here you go. Here's the news I got back up for you, Buzz, because I wrote them down. Ten lies. I appreciate that, Mike. Uh, you're talking to your folks here. you got to convince them of these things. Number one, at Daytona, or whatever is going to work for your lie, you run into Jim Nance who tells you there's going to be an after party. That's lie number one. Lie number two is I, I sort of, I've been drinking myself. I sort of invited myself to the event. And right. to my surprise, Jim Nance said yes and, and, and told me to get into the limo. Right. right. Come along in my limo. Right. Number three. Lie number three, I get into the limo and Mario yeah. Lopez is there. He used to be on Saved by the Bell. And this guy is drunk and shirtless. 
And and he keeps repeating, where's Cynthia? Lie number four. On our way to the party, we, we stop and, and again, to my surprise, pick up uh, Dennis Weaver, TV's McCloud. <laughs> That's lie number four. Lie number five. Uh, uh, Dennis, Dennis Weaver says Cynthia Nixon is with 50 Cent, <laughs> rapper 50 Cent. So lie number six, at the hotel... Jim says the party is in Cynthia Nixon's room where 50 Cent is performing. Line number seven. In the room, Cynthia Nixon and uh, 50 Cent, they're virtually naked. They're wearing towels. I don't know if they've been in the hot tub or what. But all of a sudden, Cynthia vomits. That's line number seven. Number eight. 50 Cent says, yo, get her back into the tub. Let's get her cleaned up. And so all of us, Jim Nance, Dennis Weaver, 50 Cent, and Mario Lopez and myself carry Cynthia Nixon back into the hot tub. You don't have to say all the names at that point. Right, you just okay. got to say everybody. Right, everybody all of us. Car- everybody, everybody in the group. Everybody was dirty, so we, we all would... carry her to the bathroom. Lie number nine. We're, we're all in the tub, or we're all around the tub, uh, tub, scrubbing Cynthia, trying to get her cleaned up. And, and I realize my clothing is soaked, so, and so is everyone else's. So all of us disrobe. All of us take off our clothes. Number 10. And uh, lie number 10 is, Mom and Dad, you're never going to believe this, but it ended in glorious six-way sex. Right. No, but you got it, you got it, it correctly. Dennis you... Weaver, 50 Cent, Cynthia Nixon, Jim Nance, Mario Lopez, and myself, we all had glorious <laughs> six-way sex. There it and is. you have to say the names, uh, and you have to say glorious yeah. six-way right. sex. Right. That's, that's, that's it. That's how you play the right. game, folks. Now, you got to call us. Yes, and uh, then you craft it the way. Use all the uh, the highlights and mm-hmm. make sure you have the gist of each lie. And if, if you get your mom or dad on the telephone, it will give you a little wiggle room if they say, like, oh, come on, I don't I don't think this is on the level. But if there's a definitive statement of disbelief, mm-hmm. you are out of there. You got it. So call now at 877-365-3636. Those are the ten lies. You call us and you give us your mom, your dad's phone number. You call them up. <laughs> a better group of celebrities I don't know if we've ever had. I think it's delightful. It's such a nice age range. Dennis Weaver, Mario Lopez, Cynthia Nixon, Jim Nance, 50 Cent. Multi-generational, multicultural. So you call us now, and then we'll call your parents. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Bless you and bless your families. Yes, I love you. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Switch to Singular Wireless. You get a wireless company that offers you and your family the best plans possible. That's right, my friend. Only Singular Wireless has family talk, and Singular is the only place for rollover. Rollover. God bless you and your family. Mm-hmm. Is it a good day? I hope I've made it a better day. Yes, and I hope I can cushion the blow. Ah, you know the old rollover. The rollover plan is great because it allows you to roll over your unused minutes month to month for up to a D's year. Oh, I get it. Ooh, roll over. Very clever. Just remember that singular with a C. C I N G U L A R. Check it out online at singular.com. Do people spell it with an S? All right, market research at work. <laughs> so why wait? Run screaming to your nearest Singular store or go to www.singular.com for phones and features. Certain restrictions apply. See website for complete details. Singular is neato. <laughs> we are neato. This is the Don and Mike Show. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Are you there? Am I on the air? You are. Who is yes. this? Were you looking to be on the air? Yeah, I was, but nobody said, hello, you're on the air. Hello, oh, you're, hello on, you're the on the air. air. Who is this? Oh, my name is Larry. Hey, Larry. Larry. Well, I have a brother named Larry. <laughs> Life is doesn't. so funny like that. I have a I question for yes, you. Yes, we're listening, Larry. Yeah, wh- why are you guys allowed to say bull but they couldn't say bull on the Don and Mike show? <laughs> Whoopee! <laughs> Well, Don't drink soda before you call the show. No, hello, you in the air. Uh, Joe? Yes? These were your friends calling. No, they're not. Hello, you in the air. <laughs> Whoopee! <laughs> <laughs> He's very happy about that. It's the Don and Mike Show. Hold on, I got a weird mix going here. Nice! The Don and Mike Show. It was a combination of master mix of the spinners and I also... Like- or can you get the ten? It was like the the doodle 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 loop part. You know, it was kind of working. Yeah, kind of. Not 
Anyway, it's time to play Can You Get to 10. You know, I'm thinking that, I'm just thinking of the beats. Yeah. And if you started them both at the same time. All right, I'll try it. I, I don't know. I might be wrong. Worth a shot. Hold on a second. I got to wait for the Can You Get to 10 song to requeue. And, uh,. But is it, Joe? We have exactly one contestant for this. Maybe we. Maybe it, was, it was a confusing. Can you get to ten? Buzz did a pretty decent job of writing everything out for us. Yeah, we, we maybe at the beginning we didn't say what it really is, which is we want you to call your parents and mm -hmm. uh, and and you know string this lie together, Try and to that's how it works. Tell them on the lie yeah, to win now, the prize. Uh, everybody. Uh, Joe, I'm Joe. Hi, Joe. I'm very disappointed in the people today. Joe I, said you you fielded a lot of calls from people that just didn't get it. That, and they didn't take their notes because all the while that you guys were giving the clues, they were calling in. All right, settle down, Joe. <laughs> and nice haircut, son. Yeah, it looks yeah. good, Joe. Look at that, Joe. Got him. Got himself a regular uh, regular Joe haircut. I'm very comfortable with that. I really am. Joe. There he is, Joe well, Archer. Joe. So anyway, listeners, if you do have the list, call in now because okay. we're ready to play the game. Yeah, we got, Joe, we got a couple of people to play it right now, but we need some more because, you know, usually people screw it up. Mm-hmm. I went to Daytona, ran into Jim Nance, said he's heading for the after, the after party. Oh, what the hell? We got a guy on the line to play the game. Very good. Very good. Learn from that. Let's go to the guy that, that's on the line. His name is uh, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hey, gentlemen. Let's do this. Uh, Brian, uh, who are we going to be calling here? We're going to be calling my dad. All right. And your dad's name? Jerry. 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 Yeah, Jerry. Jerry. All right. Robbie is a... Jerry. Robbie, Jerry. Robbie calling your dad up now. Uh, where are you going to set this Can You Get to 10 at? Um, I'm going to set it in Murphy's, California, only because I just recently proposed to my girlfriend there, and he may he'll buy it. Okay, all right, good. Now Whatever remember, works. if you get through all the way, and you it, and you can always say a Daytona after party because you, know, you could have been watching the race. Absolutely, my go. dad's kind of clueless, so it won't matter. Okay. Well, isn't that nice? Okay, yeah, thank you. You're playing for a uh, digital camera. Uh, yeah. And a uh, hundred dollars in cash from Malcolm in the Middle. Watch the hundredth episode of Malcolm in the Middle Sunday at nine eight uh, Central only on Fox. Very good. You got to get through all of these with your dad, and it, 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 we'll give you. You got him, Robbie. Hi, Jerry. Yes, this is. Uh, Robbie. There you go. Uh, Rob Stein. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll give you the opportunity to wiggle out, but if at any point your dad says, "Ah, oh, I don't believe this," oh, hey, you're a liar, yeah. you're a liar, I disown you. You're out of my will. He <laughs> may, he may curse. I don't know. That's all right. Well, I. I have a delay, Good. and I'm ready to press the button. <laughs> okay. Not afraid to use it. I've learned the lesson. <laughs> I know. I am ready. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> I will rely on no one else. <laughs> I will press the button. Good for you, Don. And if I don't press it, Mike will yell at me to press it. <laughs> That's right. we, have, we have new systems in place now. <laughs> and you. I'm really all for them. Don's got the button. I'm over here going, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and I got worried why I said Negro today. <laughs> <laughs> I know where the line is. Good for you, Don. I know where it is. Thank you. And the line is BS. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is BS. Here's a Jerry now. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Here's a Jerry. We have uh, your son... Brian on the line with us. We're playing uh, uh, Tell Dad Everything. Hey, Dad. And anyway, hey, my favorite son. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna leave it to you now. Here is uh, Brian and uh, Jerry. Oh, hey, Dad. Let me uh, just tell both of you guys. Mike has already got his uh, CD out. Yeah, yeah, I do. It just. Uh, it, hi, Jerry. How you doing? Great. Okay. No, it's it's back in. I put it and back course, in. It's, it's garage. Stands for crap detector. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Brian. Tell your dad what you have to tell him. We're stepping aside. Hey, Dad, you know this weekend how um, I was up there at the cabin and proposed to Stacy? Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. That was no junk, you know, we're getting married. But um, the most amazing thing happened, I, you know, in all the drama about the wedding, I forgot to tell you guys what who I met when we were up there in Murphy's at, that, at Murphy's Hotel. Yep. Okay, so I'm a little, you know, I'm drunk a little bit. And I come rolling out of uh, Murphy's Hotel. And there's a limo there, and it's uh, Jim Nance. Do you know who Jim Nance is? From CBS, uh, hosts a show with, uh, I think, like, Boomer and, uh, okay, you know. So, anyway. I'm there. only guessing he's taking a long time because his dad's old. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's sitting there, and I, you know, knocked, banged on the window in my drunken stupor and said, Hey, Joe Ardinger called hey, this Jim. guy a knucklehead. 
you know, let's uh, let's take a ride, man. And he says, yeah, get on in, man. I'm going to a, a little party. Right? Compared to Joe, this guy sounds like Mr. Mensa. <laughs> so he says, you know, we're going to a party, you know, a little party. Do you want to go? I said, yeah, of course, you know. I never miss a party. So I jump in, and in the back seat is this guy. He's got his shirt off, and he's sitting there. And it's that guy from Saved by the Bell. His name's Mario Lopez. He does local uh, advertisements for Sacramento car dealers. Okay. And, uh, That's a nice touch. So he's sitting there, and he's just like, hey, where's Cynthia? Where's Cynthia? Hey, that's number three. I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't know who Cynthia is. So Nance and this guy are getting together, and they say, well, they're... It, uh, My prediction is the guy, the, the dad will sit through all this yeah, now, Dennis and then say he doesn't believe it. Yeah, do you remember who Dennis McClain is? Dennis oh. McClain. No. Moron. McLeod? Dennis McLean is a... Uh, Dave, oh, on the TV a, show, McLeod? Yeah, it? McLeod. Dennis Weaver. Weaver, sorry. Thank, thank Dad. you, Dad. <laughs> Your son's so a moron. He's, so he's telling me that, that they're at this Weaver guy's place. So we're like, yeah, we're right on. Let's roll. Danny McLean was the last 30-game winner in the majors, right? Is this right. really going somewhere, son? Yeah. So we go there. And, um, He's messing it up so bad. So all of a yeah. sudden... His dad already said, is this story going anywhere? But he said, we're going to this Weaver's girl, place. I mean, this dude, Mario Lopez, is yelling about Cynthia, right? So we, we go to pick up uh, Weaver, right? <laughs> We're rolling down the street, and we go to Weaver's Motel. Now it's where he's getting, he's getting to the best part. Sacramento, but it's, he's, I'm glad so he's changed to a in, motel. And they say, okay, Dad, do you know who Cynthia Nixon is? I'm sorry? Cynthia Nixon? <laughs> that might be related to Tricky Dicky? She's a total hottie <laughs> from uh, the, uh, that girl show. That's the, a legend. Uh, uh, Sex in the City. Okay. She looks like Dave Foley. I like okay. that. I like that getting bored with him. Yeah. Story so, going anywhere? So anyway, we, we roll up to uh, Cynthia Nixon's room, and Nats is like, no, dude. You know, the party's up in Cynthia's room, you know, with 50 Cent, dude. He's doing a concert. You know who 50 Cent is, Dad? That, that dude with the Band-Aid on his eye? Dude. That you really admire? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Dad okay. doesn't know who that is. So anyway, we roll up there. And, oh, my God, Cynthia rolls out with 50, and they've got their shirts are half off, they're tore off. They're tore off. And we're, we're partying, man, and they're half naked. So then all of a sudden, Cynthia starts just throwing up on herself, like projectile vomiting all over. So I'm going, man, what do I do? You know me, I'm a lifesaver, so there's a hot tub there. God, I'm a lifesaver. Uh, hey, so this guy. we roll up to the hot tub. Nobody's doing it. And we're going to... uh Get in the hot tub, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, my clothes are all wet, you know. I, Dad, you know me, I can't jump he's, in the tub. He's getting close to the payoff here. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Dad, check this out. This girl is so hot, and she is naked and vomiting and stuff, but anyway, I tore my clothes off. I jump in the hot tub, and all of a sudden, myself... 50 Cent, Cynthia Nixon, Mario Lopez, and Dennis Weaver, whatever his name is, and Jim Nance. Oh, we had great, glorious six-way sex. I guess probably my first question is, where was where was your fiance during all this? Yeah, she watched. Yeah, that's a winner. Hold on, let's give him a second, though. Let's just give him a second. Yep. Yeah, give us a second. Yeah, I'll give you a second. Go ahead. Dad, it was great. That that Nixon girl was so pretty, vomit or not, she was beautiful. And Nats, ooh, he's a pretty little girl. <laughs> Sir, hey Jerry, yeah, Jerry, uh, what do you think, Jerry? That's yeah. my son. And and his son turned the radio down. Okay, there's no radio on. Or maybe I bet it's the dad with the TV on. Dad, what are you watching? Jerry, what are you watching on TV right now? Nothing. I'm at work. Try to make a living to keep my wife in the station of life she's accustomed to. That was our show in the background. Because I heard fiance. Who is... Oh, hi, Buzz. Hi. Hi. What happened to Buzz's microphone there? Hello. Hi, Buzz. Hi. There you go. Okay. It's back on. So, I, I don't know. Do we have a winner? I think we technically have a winner, but... You do. But the thing is, the kid... What's the kid's name? What's, what's Sonny? What's your name? Uh, Brian? Yeah. Brian, I, I distinctly heard, like, fiancé in the background played over a radio. Was that was that coming out of your radio? No, I don't. Have, I'm sitting in my office. I don't have a radio. Oh, okay. Uh, so Jerry, so, either. 
So, Jerry? Yeah. Uh, you're okay with your son having had <laughs> sex with Jim Nance, Mario Lopez, Dennis Weaver, 50 Cent, and six, Cynthia Nixon? He might have a problem with the whole 50 Cent thing. Didn't, um, didn't ask you, Brian. That's all right. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's, the, that's the fruit of my loins. <laughs> I think we have to give it to him. As much as we, uh, I think you believe we're it. having trouble with these people. I, I you know, where, what part of the country are we calling? Sacramento. Sacramento. Your favorite. Oh, all right. Wait a minute. I was born in Missouri. That's the show me state. There, there you go. go. All right, all over, right. Pops. Right. Mm. You know, I'm just gonna say, the guy's a winner because I think it's one of those deals where you just. You know, you're talking to the the dad. The dad yeah, I think like so. He's hearing you, but not. I'm a little wobbly. I will reserve a little crap to take around. I definitely just believe that uh, my, my son and I have this unique relationship. Well, it's actually and, not and true, goes, sir. So you don't have to worry. Jerry. All right, yeah, whatever. To be yeah. my best friend. Okay. So you weren't surprised to hear this story. Well, you got you, your show doesn't run that long. I can tell you a lot of stories, my friends. Yeah. Uh, so you know the show. You know the show well, obviously. You're not this guy's oh, yeah. dad. You're not this I, I, guy's I dad. Every chance I get, I do. Mm -hmm. Like right now. Well, no, that's cool. It work right now. A lot of times with the... With the with First the, off, let's, let's get to the bull, Hey, Dad. Let's hey, Dad. Get, tell him the truth. He hates your show. Let's get to when the bottom I, When I come into his work, he turns it off. Because yeah. I can't hear Hey, let me ask you something, uh, Jerry. What year? Yeah, were... I think my crap detector's going off. I think we're being scammed. Yeah, I, me too. What, what year were you born, Jerry? 1949. Okay. I'll, I'll be 55. You'll be 55. I would have been 56, but I spent a year in jail. Why? <laughs> March 24th, 49. What were you? Uh, what were you in jail for, Jerry? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What were you in jail for? I I I'd rather not talk about it. All right. Okay. Well, that's when I lived on a farm. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Dad, you're not you're not helping the matter here. Hold on. Well, you you haven't helped either, Dum Dum. Hold on, Brian. Yeah. Hold on, Jerry. Hold I on. I think we're going to have to put it up to a uh, inquisition vote. Uh, we are. Hello, Don and Mike. What do you think? Oh, he's lying. He, the guy stated that he doesn't have a radio in his office. Then how does he know that you're running a contest? Bingo. Very good. I didn't hello. think of it myself. Don and Mike, hey. hello. What do you think? No, they're lying. Somebody's lying on there. I agree. But do you have a reason? I mean, we all think so, but do you have a reason? Yeah, when they heard the uh, the word fiancé in the background, somebody was listening to the show, and yeah. then the son said, you know, hey, I don't have a radio, so how did he know to call in to play the contest in the first place? Uh-huh, Don and Mike show, hello. Oops, line eight. Hi, Don and Mike, hello. Hello. You're on the air. Hey, I heard you guys on the radio, too. I think he's full of crap, too. Okay. I heard you guys on the radio when you guys were talk talking about it. Right, so that's the bone of contention that everybody heard of. Yeah, I the, on the delay. What I distinctly heard, and I think most people on the air heard fiancé. Hello, Don and Mike. Hello? Hello? Yeah, what wind tunnel are you calling from? Hello? Nobody in this world. Uh, uh, and congratulations, Star Jones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, fantastic move getting that guy. Can you imagine that guy? Oh, yeah. The yeah. first night. Can I imagine him? And then after he's down there the first night, thinking about the second night. Oh, yeah. And the third night. It's a party. And then by the, the fourth night, like, your, your lungs explode. A lot of the first night he's going to spend on MapQuest. <laughs> <laughs> so, guilty or innocent for these people? Hello? Yeah, we lost him. That was the wind tunnel guy. Don and Mike. Hello? Hello. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I think they're guilty as hell. Yeah, I think they are, too. Mm-hmm. I think they are too. Hey Brian? Yeah, guilty of what? Guilty of uh, scamming us. You're not uh, you're not on the up and up. Oh, I don't know how to My dad does not listen to the show. Well, I just Well, I don't doubt that might be the case, but I think you prearranged this. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I did have a premonition during your absence. Hey dad, let's call in and win a call. Well, no, you could have done it during the commercials. And coincidentally, your dad just hung up. Well, he's got to get back to work. And coincidentally, I've called Joe all day just to even talk to you guys. Well, it's just, you know, the, maybe it's the attitude, maybe it's something, but, you know, we uh, we had our listeners vote on it, and, and, and everybody in here thinks you're guilty. Do you want to talk to some of our listeners? Yeah, yeah sure. These, these calls are on screen. i got about a minute. So it's totally fine. subjective. You might be, uh, you know, we might be sending you to the chair as an innocent what, man. Why? Because I, I memorized the, the, the ten lies? No, you can write them down, but call your dad and say, listen, no matter what I say to you, just say okay. Hello, Don and Mike, you're on the, guy with the, you're on the air with this guy. <laughs> yeah, this liar that we got here? Hey, what's up? 
He said, in fact, that his dad does listen to the show. Even his dad said that he listened to the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he did, but he's lying. And, Brian, here's the most... Hold on, you're saying your dad's lying? Yeah. But, Brian, here's the most important thing. He does not listen to the show. This is what this is what really got me, Brian. This is what really got me going, Brian. I distinctly heard a radio coming from one of the phones. It was either you or your dad. That was me walking from my office into the... Mm, the, yeah. Here, you want to hear it? Watch, right there, right now, right here. You, You'll hear it again. Why you, I oughta. <laughs> Brian, you say your dad doesn't listen to the show? No, he doesn't. Then why would he know who I was when I called and said I'm calling from the Don and Mike show? There was definitely a spark of recognition. He knows of the show. I That's see. I, when I go well, over there, I, I go over to his shop and turn it on. Let's take a call from another of your peers. The live Hello. shop. Don and Mike show. Hi. Yeah, whatever, Rob. F you, Rob. Hello, you're on. You're on with Brian. Touchy? Hello. Hey, Brian. Uh, hi, how are you? I, you know, you're full of crap, Brian. Sorry, buddy. But <laughs> I distinctly heard... Wait, wait a minute. This... Somebody... No, no, Brian, shut up. No, shut up and shut listen. Up. This oh, contest isn't Good about break. isn't about lying. All yeah, I did was you know, all I did you know, was the rule set and read read what happened, right? So how is that lying? It wasn't a setup. Brian. My dad was Brian. interested in the Brian, story. come on, bro. Brian. Brian, come on. Brian, wouldn't yeah. you yeah, come on? Wouldn't man. you feel better just being on us? You gonna do that? You know what, wow. Brian? I don't understand why there's so many people against you, because you seem like such a nice guy. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, make, he is. I bought you a beer before, Mike. Hello, Don and Mike show. Here's another Brian, Brian is definitely lying. There's way too much mixture going on here with the uh, with the, the dads. Uh, get a better phone. Oh, thank you for directing the show. Hello, Don and Mike. I, hey. t- I took a direction. I took another call. Hello. Hey, Don and Mike. Yeah. Hey, hey, guys, welcome back. Thanks. What's thank up? you. Big fan. Um... First words out of his mouth led me to believe, set off my crap detector. The first words out of his mouth were, Dad, I just got engaged. I, you know, I told you about this uh, girl I got engaged to, my fiance, and that's no junk. Why would he say that? That's the first thing he said. Why would he say, Lion Brian, why would you say that? Good question. Because I didn't want him to think that the reason we were calling him was to tell him that my engagement was a, a total joke. Yeah, but why would he even think it was junk at all or anything you were saying was junk? I don't know, <laughs> Mr. Lion Brian, I want to tell you something. I'm disqualifying you now because why? I, I can't tell you. Well, I can't tell you why. Let me just tell you this: We had a meeting today before yeah. our show. I cannot. Dis- I cannot. It, it was awful. I can't disclose the meeting. Right. However, an answer was given to a question, and, and the answer the, the question was asked, and mm-hmm. the answer was, "I don't know." Yeah. And, Not thick enough. And that, as of today, you did that on purpose. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So that... I said it, and then when you just said it, I hit the delay. Brian. So did everyone else, I think. Yeah, I think we're done. The system works. I think we're done. (laughs) This time, I'm out of yellow lights. Right. (laughs) Oh, my. Ain't that funny. (laughs) System seems to work now. Yes, it does. If he's still listening, though, if he's ever in town, I'd love to hang out with him. Yeah, really. Well, you know, I don't care. Now, now I hope he was telling the truth. And we just disqualify disqualify him because he's a ween. Guy, guy said the uh, BS word. He said, well, you said BS. Okay, I said BS. I got suspended and almost fired for two weeks. Are you playing a radio game, dude? Right. You just exactly. called and you, you weren't even able to pull it off. Well, now we got to give away a prize. Oh, it's time for Buzz. Oh, my God, the show's almost over. You know, I love the world where owning <laughs> a radio was strictly forbidden. One man found a way to bring good news to his people. Look at this. me. He made it up. 6.03. Yeah. I mean, it's 3.03 on the West Coast. Right. Jesus Christ, the show's almost over. But How about that? What is your lead story today on, on your news and comments, Buzz? Today, the star of one of your favorite shows wants out. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, is the story about me? Because <laughs> I've, I've made the I've made the commitment. I'm staying with the show. No, don't don't be silly here. Is Jim Belushi leaving? I, yeah, it's a TV show, but no, it's not Jim. Okay, no, it's one of your <laughs> other favorite shows. Thank hello, you. Don, what Don and Mike? Hello. <laughs> I'm just, up. I'm just trying to give away a prize. <laughs> it is now four minutes after four o'clock at Dennis Weaver's house. <laughs> Don and Mike show. Hey, hey guys, how's it going? Okay, listen. What's your name? Scott. 
Where are you from, Scott? Spokane, Washington. Scott, $100 in cash and a digital camera courtesy of Malcolm in the Middle. Hello, Scott. <laughs> I've read this commercial a million times today. Thank you for listening, Scott. You're very fortunate. You because hey, that guys. man was telling a lie. Stop talking when I'm talking, Scott. Scott. <laughs> You've won a very nice prize because the other man was a liar. Zip it. 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 Okay, goodbye. Hold, hold on. Thanks. Hold on. And uh, Buzz is ne next with the news about the TV star. Right. That's not Jim Belushi. Right. Very interesting. And Mike. Stay tuned everybody. for news and comments. Stay tuned. Coming up news on the Don and Mike Don Show. I swear to God, we just like done the first break of the show today. <laughs> We're almost done. That was very professional. This is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Please, no back talk. The Don and Mike Show. All right, right. Time for Buzz's news and comments now. Buzz brought to you by Veramax Sexual per uh, Sexual Pleasure Performance Enhancer. Someone called for a doctor. The doctor developed clinically tested Veramax works. Get it right at GNC. Other select retailers. Try it today. Vero Max. One AAA. Try V Max. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow you want to listen right at the beginning of the show. Mike will be outside. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Fortunately for you, the weather is not going to be awful. It's going to be like 50 degrees. Yeah, I'll have a nice uh, overcoat. It'll be 50 degrees tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Canada. <laughs> As Mike stands in front of the radio station, and for the better part of the first break, which is normally 20 or 25 minutes. <laughs> Until you're kind enough to maybe ask me to come in. It was simply a bet today about Adam Singer. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Mike will be singing... This. Good morning. This is Rick Dees in the morning. I hope you're feeling great today. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. It's an honor and a no. privilege. Shut up, Rick. Shut up. Mike will be singing the uh, Canadian National Anthem. You know, I'll tell you what I was thinking. I uh, I was telling you about that uh, Conan show that I watched up in Canada. Right. And Adam Sandler was on it. That's it. Uh, That's all I was doing. I was like, maybe he's on it because he's Canadian. He looks, no. looks Canadian. He's so well, he was wearing a big down jacket. There you go. He is so American. Hi, bud. Oh, and his dog died. Meatball died. Oh. Adam Sandler's dog, Meatball, died. Um, you know, I because I have to do this thing outside, good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, the, the phony, sincere, happy Mike would never have said that. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get back into that. Let me just say to the Sandler family, I'm so sorry about your pooch. Hey, <laughs> Don and Mike. Okay. You're the star of one of TV's hottest shows. You make a decent living. The network gives you a big plasma screen TV to say thanks for the ratings. And what do you do? You say you're going to quit, and you badmouth the people who put you on the air. And you don't just threaten to quit. You say you're definitely going to quit because you're disgusted. What, are you tapping my phone lines? No. <laughs> Talking about William Peterson. He says he wants out of CSI as soon as possible. Wow. You know, I, I got, did not know you were going to have this story. I, I, I lie. I did know you were going to have this story. <laughs> but I didn't know that it... Because I have a meeting with Buzz every day. Buzz, right. Here's what I, I have. All mm -hmm. Buzz told me was... One of your favorite TV stars is going to quit his show. Okay. That's all I knew. I'm real surprised. So that. now that I know it's William Peterson, before I hear any more of the story, uh -huh. uh, I'll tell you that while I was watching, while we were fired, suspended, I watched Jay Leno on Inside the Actor's Studio. Oh, my oh, God. God. Why is which, he on that show anyway? Which is as unbelievable as the fact that Stuttering John from the Stern Show has been hired as the new announcer for Jay Leno. New announcer for Jay Leno, that's right. But while I'm while I'm watching this... The, at, at some point, they were talking about William Peterson for some reason. Okay. Jay Leno and the, and the guy were talking about William Peterson, and they were saying William Peterson is very stuck up, and that William Peterson doesn't like the fact that there's a CSI Miami, mm -hmm. and doesn't like the fact that there's going to be CSI New York, mm -hmm. and that he is an egomaniac. Really? Is what James Lipton, who's kind of a dick anyway, the guy that, you know, the, the behind the actors. Yeah, I mean, talking right. about pompous. He was saying how pompous William Peterson was. Really? Wow. And <laughs> then it was, Jay Leno was, you know, yeah, he's been going to my show, he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he never no, I don't have a problem with anybody. He comes down and he's, he's all right. I don't understand. Doesn't he own a piece of the original CSI? Isn't he a producer of it? Yes, he, yes, he is. This As a matter of fact. Buzz is chomping over there. I, I have sorry. all of this here. <laughs> all right, Buzz. Okay. All right, sorry, well, Buzz. Quoting William Peterson, I'll do CSI until I legally don't have to, which is the end of next year, I think. Peterson, who's co-executive producer of the show, never was happy about the CSI Miami spinoff. He's even madder about the plans for CSI New York. He says the spinoff sapped the creative energy of his writers and producers. He said it reminds him of McDonald's. Quoting again, that's Viacom. 
And when he talks about uh, three people he says are getting filthy rich off the show, he says this. Peterson says he'd like to see CBS chief Les Moonves and CSI producers Jerry Bruckheimer and Peter Sussman play corpses on CSI. <laughs> Quoting again, you'd have to ask their wives if they'd be convincing as you know, fifths. I'm, I'm listening oh, to, God. I'm listening to the guy. I don't blame him. Again. I mean, I really don't. I mean, no. I don't blame him at all. I mean, no, he's right. If I'm on that show and you want to be, you know, you no. want CSI to be CSI. No, no I disagree. Mm -hmm. And I disagree because, well, first off, I like CSI. I love CSI. I, I like, like CSI Miami, but I can certainly empathize with the way he must feel when they're franchising but I think, But I think it makes him look better. I think when you watch CSI Miami, you go, listen, the reason you watch the show is because... Well, it's it's on, mm -hmm. and you get to see dead people, and mm -hmm. you get to see cool stuff with like bullets going into them, and like. But organs. you agree, you like him too. I mean, I like him. On I like him as he's an the, actor. He's right. the best one, yeah. uh, the best male character. On However, him. I'll say this: that I've never been a big fan of Law and Order, mm -hmm. especially with that guy uh, right. Jerry uh, Off. What's the guy's name? The Orbach. the uh, Orbach, Jerry yeah. Orbach. Mm -hmm. But I do kind of like the one that has the guy and the girl, and I, I kind of like Victims his, Unit. Yeah, and the, the mm -hmm. one with ice, uh, it's not Ice Cube, it's Ice-T. Uh, SVU. The one that maybe has Richard Belzer on it. Anyway, here's my point. That show is on NBC every night in some form. Right. Yeah. And I don't find a problem with it. It's like I turn to well, all right, there's something good on it. I'll tell you what, I don't, I'm, and here's my point. I don't find a problem with it either, but I understand how you would feel if you, if they were, like sapping your show with like ideas and stuff like that and really watering it down and watering down the quality of the show you were on it and, and calling it CSI, you know, making it like a McDonald's. Yeah. When CSI came along, when it first came along, it was special. And every time they take a good idea out of that show and plug it into one of their other shows, that's one fewer good idea but was, look, in the like, original. And everybody, let me say, though, wouldn't you rather have a third edition of CSI where at least you knew what you were going to get rather than another two and a half men? You know, I, I agree, mm. but but if you do We're that, judging Amy. It's almost like a sequel. It's like it, it's like it's the same thing I'm always saying about Hollywood with original ideas. You know, if if they did that with every show that was successful, then you wouldn't have the CSIs around at all. I'd love CSI every night of the week. They I, and I know you love it, and I love the show too. And I actually like CSI Miami sometimes more than I do the original. They've taken it to a new level when CBS started a show <laughs> called CIS. Yes, you're okay, right. Well, that's the conf to confuse people, Don, the, we, the Mark Harmon show. Can we at least agree on this? When they come out with CSI Sacramento, that's that's when we're going to protest. <laughs> no, that'll be great because that'll mean there's someone dying every week. Rob! <laughs> Bite your tongue. <laughs> anyway, I heard that guy Peterson is, yeah. is a prick. And, and, you know, oh, shoot, I, I turned your thing there, but I didn't mean to do that. That's Sorry. all right. You know, it just means that he's uh, he's cocksure. He, yeah. he knows what he's doing. Right. That's all right. Nothing wrong with 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 being a and I, you know, and I love him in our swing in our, dick in that movie that we watched. The contender. Yes. I love him right. in that. Yeah, but on the other hand, come on, listen, William Peterson before C C uh, S I. Mm -hmm. I think the only people who really knew you existed were people like Mike and I who yeah. caught his incredible performance in the movie The Contender and some other stuff. Yeah. So listen, two pieces of advice for him. First, dude. You've got way too much dye in your beard. <laughs> yeah. Way too much dye. I hate in your it beard. when people do that. Yeah. And second, <laughs> hey, I do. Yeah. Well, and and congratulations, it's Al you Natural, must, fellas. Mike good. is not doing the faggy thing with Absolutely, his beard. Absolutely, yes. Just call me Wilfred Brimley. And number two, just don't don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of success. You're on CSI. You're on the number one show. Mm -hmm. Just chill out, man. It's the angst of an actor. Yes. Because you've got the shelf life. You know, I was wondering about this. Hey, who's the band I'm listening to now? Maroon 5. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Maroon 5, uh, I wasn't crazy about the first song. Is there anyone out there? But it's getting harder and harder to breathe. To breathe yeah. But I bought the CD, and then the second song I hear on the CD, it's Your Love or Her Love Something. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this song kicks ass. Yeah. And I'm listening to the CD, and I'm thinking, this is pretty good, and really wondering, do the guys in Maroon 5, do they realize that a year from now... Yeah. It'll be over. Mm -hmm. Do you really think that they live in that moment? I, and I relate that to William Peterson. It wasn't always that way in the music business, unfortunately. Or on TV or on the radio. Right. So for a guy like William Peterson, who's already been on the number one show for five years, mm -hmm. pal, I got news for you. You already hit the, the, the gravy train. Right. You you already hit it, so don't don't complain about it. C CBS's only comment is he has three years left on his contract. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It should be fun for all of them. You know, and, and then I think, and then on the other hand, there's guys like Hootie and the Blowfish, God bless them. Yeah. They just, 
don't know that you just give up. We keep on keeping on. Just just give up. It was ten years ago. It was a good album. <laughs> it, you, you hit a you hit a nerve at the right time. But boys, ten years have passed. Don, there's always going to be craft fairs. <laughs> just because I know you confuse me. Just sometimes. because I saw the grassroots at a craft fair, you confuse me. You know, on the one hand, you're saying William Peterson, stay with it and shut up, and Hootie and the Blowfish, who have behaved themselves and haven't complained, you're telling them to quit. How do you know? I'm confused by your message. How do you know that that Hootie hasn't complained? Well, and he may he may have to his he, fellow bandmates. He should. And, and Mike, it's not a he. It's Darius. It's Rucker. Darius Rucker. Yes. Who, who, Hootie <laughs> is not Darius Rucker as. So many idiots have thought for years, <laughs> and they were very. And he he used to be very annoyed at that. Anyway, yeah. you know, Michael, why don't people know that they have the shelf life? Like, take me for instance, our show. Mm -hmm. I know that people started hating our show about ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm cool with. That. <laughs> we were very popular ten years ago. Mm -hmm. We're not so popular now. All right, that's okay. We're still happy with what we're doing. Yeah, I would beg to differ. I think we're as popular today as we were a long time ago, and I want to say. Good afternoon. Something good is going to happen to you. <laughs> no, we stink. Mm -hmm. We stink. But at least we know we stink. Okay? We stink. We're doing the best we can. That's right. That's but the we main stink. Thing. And we love you. <laughs> well, now you're being like him again. I know. And Rob, I, I told you, I, I hate to lecture you, Rob. Yes. Did, didn't I ask you, please be a deer and leave the Rick D's thing in there at all times? Well, you played it once already. I didn't think. I know. Actually, come on. I don't pay you to think. Can't we yeah. skip ahead on it so we don't have to hear that? Boring music. Oh, now, listen, Mike, i got to tell you something. <laughs> Rob and I had this discussion before the show. Rob said, we've got to cut down. And I said, leave the intro in. Okay. And Rob said, no, no take the intro. I said, leave, leave. I like talking up the intro. Is the music boring or inspiring? Sucks. <laughs> it's only 17 seconds. Here he is. This is Rick Dees in the morning. I hope you're feeling great today. I'm it's green. an honor and a privilege <laughs> to host get the number one part. revenue generating radio show. All right, fast forward a little bit. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear some of the clips? No, I, I thought we took the clips out. I left it a couple of minutes. Oh, you. Like, Donnie had to leave in the one about the arm. means so much to you. The listener. Someone whom you've literally awakened for years. Someone to whom you've gently said, wake up, or maybe not so gently. Oh, really? It's a new day. Let's get going. Could I cheer you up with maybe a story or a joke or a wild character on the telephone? You're crazy, Rick. Or even, wake up, I'm sorry, I have some bad news. William Peterson is upset. <laughs> if I possibly can, I'm going to cushion the blow for you. To be here to listen and hopefully make you feel better. Yeah. He's a How do you tell that person you love so much? Goodbye. See ya. To paraphrase from my favorite book, God put you and me together each morning. I don't remember reading that in Ball Four. That is uh, from a no wedding man put asunder. I mean, that's my favorite that's book. Right. Wedding Bow. Ball Four by Jim Bowden. Bowden. I thought that that was universally accepted as the guy's <laughs> favorite book of all time. Famous radio show. I mean, all guys. God bless you from the heart of my microphone. And thanks. <laughs> oh, it's early. It's early. I'd like to accept a check for one thousand dollars. <laughs> And a giant view. This is the biggest bag of toys, toys I have ever seen. Break it. Oh, God. Last week, we made a commitment to get Mark Fallander a new arm. And a prosthetic arm is very expensive. Very what they have to do with this arm, it's $50,000. I can report to you now, we hit $50,000. Okay, pause it there. We'll come back to it again. Don't take it. Please be a deer and don't take it out of the machine. He's a magician. Buzz. Yes. There's the transition music. There you go. 24 star Kiefer Sutherland had to go to the hospital after getting punched in the face in a bar fight. It happened in Los Angeles. According to his spokesman, Kiefer was defending himself. Previously on bar fight. But he needed six stitches in his face. You're out of order, Buzz. <laughs> I'm really going to smack that guy. I had to start taking the heroin so that Hector would believe me. I had to start six weeks in advance. He did that last night. Because he really only has the two speeds. It's either the whispering or the screaming. The yelling. Previously yeah. on 24. I have to go to the hospital. Ellen K., God bless you. What's this I hear about Kiefer? I'm in the hospital because I got smacked in the jaw. <laughs> Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland on the D's in the morning hotline. Kiefer, I'm praying for you. And I love you, Rick. Make it a good, good day. Good luck to you. <laughs> Get out of town. You always suck. Rick D's in the morning. What time is it? It's
tickets early. <laughs> <laughs> well, the six stitches in Kiefer's face apparently will not disrupt filming and may even be woven into the storyline. Kiefer's apparently been in a string of bar fights in the last ten years or so. 36, by the way, is his unlucky number. He served 36 months probation for drunk driving, and he got dumped by Julia Roberts 36 days before they were to have been married. You know, that's a that's a fact about Keith or Sutherland. Now that he's popular, everybody mm -hmm. likes 24, except Mike. Uh, I actually like it. I just don't watch it anymore. I, I know you don't. I'm just busting your balls. Mm -hmm. but a lot of people, myself included, until Buzz said that, I would have totally not remember that Forgotten he was involved. But Julia? Julia Roberts, mm -hmm. I remember with w the guy that looks Lyle like... Lyle Lovett. Abe yeah. Lincoln, right. right. Lyle Lovett. Right. <laughs> right. But I I totally have blocked out the fact that, that he was getting into that. Yeah. he's. Yeah. Uh, I think he's an unhappy dude. Having yeah. nose, nose sex with her. Oh, the angst of an actor. Yeah, having, maybe the guy that hit him was William Peterson. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> having, having sex with her giant nostrils. <laughs> and you, you know who else he was engaged to? Who? Congratulations. This is Max Bear Jr., Jethro Bodine from the Beverly Hillbillies, and you just won the CBS Celebrity Burp Contest. <laughs> Things never change. George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> we love that best. Oh, my Playing stuff that has nothing to do with nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Buzz, see what you started. Yeah, I do. It's, it's all my fault. Look at this. You got I'm the one, sorry. You got the story about the, the guy from CSI. William Peterson. And you got the other story. Now, we, we got a break. Yes. What is, uh, what's next on your, on your list of uh, tales? Up next, a big, fat, obnoxious lawsuit. Oh, right. Uh, from the Fox. That's another show that's on TV that we're not talking about. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so stay tuned. This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. A lifestyle-oriented program, The Don and Mike Show. Right, right. And now here is Buzz, uh, Buzz Turner Overdrive. Hi, Buzz. Hi, <laughs> Don and Mike. The, make the makers of the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding have filed a big fat lawsuit against the makers of the TV show My Big Fat Obnoxious Fiancé. Gold Circle Films says Fox is misleading viewers into thinking the movie and the TV show are somehow connected. Oh, no. Oh. Because, of, because the word's big fat? Yeah. Listen, I, I'm the last person to <laughs> see my big fat Greek wedding. Why don't they sue uh, Al Franken for uh, writing uh, Rush Limbaugh's <laughs> a big fat idiot? It's already been done. Uh, <laughs> That's right. If I could just interject this, I know I'm years late. Yeah. How am I supposed to believe that that good-looking guy that was on Sex in the City yeah. would really want to be with that pig in my big fat Greek wedding? Right. I, I mean, has this been brought up already? I know that the Don, movie's been out for two years. The answer is love. She, he was in love with her, but when he saw her in the travel agency, yeah. she's a big pig, though. She, but he, she spiced herself all up real nice. It doesn't matter though. I mean, that's like putting a ribbon on a turd. Sexy <laughs> is on the inside. She's got contacts. Yeah, <laughs> fixed her hair, and and you know, and Michael Constantine was her father. You know, eventually, <laughs> and they used Windex for everything. She'll get that <laughs> restaurant, and that's a cash cow. Absolutely, when she gets the diner, I didn't even see roll. enough of the movie. I just saw and the, the lady from Second City TV who played the aunt Andrea was Martin. Fantastic. I just saw the one guy. Say, hey, that's the guy that was going with the girl on Sex and the City. Wait a minute, hold on, John he's, Corbett. He's laying in bed with a big fat girl. Hey, uh, uh, hey, come on, don't believe it. Don't you ever watch One Life to Live? What a comical culture clash when those two families got together. It's oh, all about oh. love. Come on now. Have you seen Vicky with that guy? Oh, on One Life to Live. Come on now. It's the world of pretend. Play so back. the people from My Big Fat Greek Wedding, the movie, they're suing My Big Fat Obnoxious Fiance. You're at the TV show, right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's dumb. They're not connected, as most people know, but Gold Circle Films must have big, fat, lazy lawyers because they're a little late to the party. The final episode of the TV show airs in just five days. Fox calls the lawsuit a big waste of everyone's time. Notice, a big fat waste of everyone's time. Notice hey. they did not use the word fat oh, this time. Oh, I'm sorry. We did right. We've been no. doing that to you all day. That's fine. Do you you're think you're you, right. You think if you put that guy in a room and you blindfolded him and you had naked in there, you had the guy who is my big fat fiance uh -huh. and the girl from my my big fat Greek wedding. Now you've you, gone too far. Do you think he'd be able to tell the difference? Depends on what direction they were standing. Yeah, what, if they, what if they were facing? It depends on what wall they were facing. What if they were facing the wall? They were facing the wall? 
Yeah, he wouldn't be able to tell. But if they were facing him, unless he's a complete idiot. <laughs> map quest. He'd be able to tell. <laughs> Maybe map Hold on, how would... Here's the thing, though. Maybe they maybe they both have the same size penis. Well, maybe they're right. Or maybe it looks like the guy on the game Operation. Yes. His stomach just drooping down. <laughs> and you know who produced that was Tom Hanks and his wife. So oh. they're probably in on the lawsuit. Oh. Rita Wilson. Yes. Uh, they need nice the cans. Yeah, she hey, I'd like that. You ought to do some digging on that. I like that. Find out if Tom Hanks is in on the lawsuit. He's such a nice guy, though. No. <laughs> Hello there. I'm looking, I'm looking Rob Stop through, through a microphone stand. <laughs> Peekaboo. Yoo-hoo. 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 It's been 11 years since John Wayne Bobbitt's wife cut off his manhood and tossed it into a field here in the Virginia suburbs of Washington, D.C. He's no longer married to the woman who'd grown tired of the beatings, but life hasn't gotten any easier for John. After a failed life as a porn star, after failing at yet another marriage, Bobbitt is settling down again with wife number three in Las Vegas, and they're having a baby. Sort of. They're using John's sperm to fertilize the eggs of a surrogate mother. John's current wife is no longer able to conceive. And John can apparently only function with Viagra. He's still disfigured. Quoting his new bride, John is extremely shy about the way he looks and will never walk around naked in front of me. Oh, his D, because his wife cut his D off. Yeah. Well, I remember what that. the F and do? She, she cut it off and threw it in a 7-Eleven parking lot. <laughs> remember that? That was yeah, a true story. Yeah. Very close Happen, to the radio station. Happened right here, yeah. yeah. We hate what the Disney company... It's raining yellow. <laughs> we hate what the Disney company has become. Roy Disney hates what the company has become. And families that once liked Disney now have a website to talk about how much they hate what Disney's become. The stockholders aren't that happy either. Knowing here's, all here's that. Here's a Disney stockholder who loves what they've done. Hi, this is Wolfgang Juretzek from Germany. Yes. Never forget. That's right. <laughs> the Don and Mike show. He Thank loves you. Disney. Thank you, Wolfie. Now, no, knowing all this about the current Disney, the Disney Board of Directors this week unanimously rejected an offer from Comcast to take the company out of the hands of the evil Michael Eisner. Even so, it didn't close that door entirely. The board says the Comcast offer was too low and that it would consider any legitimate proposal. Comcast says the offer was legit, and experts say time is on Comcast's side. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Disney's going to be eaten up uh, eventually by a bigger conglomerate. And, and I uh, hope it makes it a better company. I mean, because oh. it really has been a crappy company for a long time. I, I know that I'm speaking very inside here, uh, but I'll tell you that it, the stuff on ABC TV, mm. well, it's just it's as awful as the stuff on CBS right. and NBC and Fox. It's really worse, though. I yeah, mean, it is. You They're the fourth in, network now. Uh, a lot of the, the guys that are in Comcast now are guys who used to work at a company called Cap Cities, mm -hmm. which was the original company that absorbed ABC. Right. So the thought is, these guys, Comcast, one of the reasons they want to take over ABC is to fix the network. Right, yeah, exactly. That yeah. they think, we did it right before. And keep in mind, when these guys did it right, it was when they were running shows like Love Boat. Yeah. Exactly. You know, these, are the guys, <laughs> these are the guys from the glory days of ABC. <laughs> and, well, they, but the sports was better. You know, the sports yeah. department was better. In those yeah, that days. is true. That is true. Oh. Although it sounds like a good idea, you won't be hearing the Johnny Cash song Ring of Fire in a hemorrhoid commercial. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. A TV producer in Florida got the idea when she heard the song on the radio as she squirmed in the seat of her car. I sat down on a burning ring of fire. She knows one of the guys who co-wrote the song with Johnny and his wife, June Carter. Michael. But the Carter family has made it clear they will not allow the song to be used in a commercial for hemorrhoidal relief. They say the idea is moronic and demeaning. Hey, come on, if Don Zimmer can do it. Oh. In sports, nearly three dozen people got sunburns at night in the gymnasium at Pennsylvania's Dunmore High School. Some people's corneas were damaged as well by the lighting in the gym during a boys' basketball game. Quoting the coach, it smells like a tanning salon in here. Quoting a fan, I look like I've been in the Bahamas for a few days. One fan has been told not to wear her contact lenses for four days because of her sunburned corneas. <laughs> Apparently, a UV filter on one of the lights got broken, and most victims didn't know what was happening until they awoke in the middle of the night sunburned. Get to know Charlie. <laughs> Get to know Charlie. It's okay. We don't need Get to, to replace Charlie. We don't need to replace the ball. Charlie, my eyes are burning. <laughs> UV protection gone. Get to know Charlie. Evil Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, British nurse Jenny Richards had to take her dog to the vet because he'd just plain lost his appetite. The vet performed emergency life-saving surgery on the dog and removed one of Jenny's 
thongs from the dog's intestine, along with eight inches of the dog's intestine. Mm. And then Thomas the Boxer was fine again. Quoting Jenny, he's eaten knickers before. One time, he threw up a thong at a dog show. <laughs> I'm Buzz Burbank. <laughs> Don and Mike Stone. Thank you, Buzz. No. Oh, yeah, oh, Mike Stone. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's enough for today. Yeah. <laughs> I just have a, a small request. Tomorrow? Yeah. Yes. How about we just come do the show? No meetings. Yeah, we just hey. come do the show just like normal. I think tomorrow might be the first normal day of the week. Yeah, okay. I mean, otherwise, uh, other than the normal meetings we have, right? No meetings. I'll be here at. Uh... I know. <laughs> yeah. Just before three. And maybe even a little later. See you at showtime. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing the, the anthem tomorrow. You're my player. All right. Yeah, my <laughs> player. And tomorrow you're singing the national anthem. Yeah. The, the Canada national anthem. Mm -hmm. Oh, Canada. The bad country. <laughs> a good day to you, sir. 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 And you, BTK. <laughs> PM. Kate. Till we meet again. This is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging.